Maria, thank you, and welcome to williams Bryce Stadium. Today, the Gamecocks step away from conference play as they welcome the Minutemen of Massachusetts for the first-ever series meeting between these two programs. You're watching SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Welcome, everybody. Tom Harmon alongside Heisman winner Andre Ware. This could be the tipping point of the season for Will Muschamp's Gamecocks. They need to win four of their next six to make it to the postseason, so expect a quarterback change today. True freshman Jake Bentley will have his red shirt removed, and he may just start this game. Yeah, this is what he's been working for his entire career. Left high school early after his junior season. Was 12-1 and one as a junior. Threw for over 2,800 yards and 28 touchdowns. He's got all the intangibles. A coach's son, a gym rat, a four-star recruit coming out of high school. This kid, I got a chance to go down to the field and watch him. He can flat out spin the football. Well, Muschamp rotated through some quarterbacks during his time at Florida and here in his first season in Columbia. This would be his third different starting quarterback if indeed Bentley takes the first snap. UMass won the toss. Miniman have elected to defer, so South Carolina will receive. Great day for football and beautiful fall weather here in the Perfect. Mid-State. Perfect afternoon for some good old college football right here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's the third SEC opponent of the season for UMass. Previous losses on the road to Florida and at Gillette Stadium against Mississippi State. Michael Caggiano will get us started. Rashad Fenton back to receive. Fenton will have a chance here from the two. And he dances his way through to the 24-yard line. Let's take you down to the field as we say hello to Cole Cubella. Tom spoke to Bobby Bentley, who's the running back coach here on the South Carolina Gamecock staff. His son, Jake Bentley, going to see time today, said, I'm nervous for two reasons today. Obviously, he wants the Gamecocks to get a win and wants to see his son do well at quarterback. This was planned from the beginning. Thought he would be a January enrollee. Now, and early as a junior, after his junior season in high school, going to get the start here today for the Gamecocks. All right, thank you, Cole. Jake Bentley, freshman from Opelika, listed as his hometown, but a home state kid, and he will hand it off on the first play to David Williams, and Williams picks up a pair. So here's what you need to know about Jake Bentley, who's getting the start today. They pull off his red shirt six games into the season. Better than 2,800 passing yards last year as a high school junior. A lot of kids are early enrollees after playing their senior year of high school. By all indications, he's just the second player in college football history to be a starting quarterback after not playing his senior year but enrolling a full year early. John David Booty played at USC was the other. Incomplete trying to get it to Debo Samuel, and that will leave third and nine. Much maligned offensive line in an offense that's only scoring two touchdowns a game by average. Yeah, and Hayden Hurst will be a go-to target for him. Leads the team in both receptions and receiving yards. He's a converted wide receiver, so he's got speed to get up the, the seams. He can work the middle of the field. Excellent hands and great size at 6'5", 250 pounds. They have struggled mightily on third down this season. Bentley deep out loud, and that's complete to Brian Edwards. Very talented freshman receiving core with Edwards leading the way, gain of 14. If they can get production out of the quarterback position, they are set around him. Rico Dowdo, the running back, Brian Edwards, who you saw just catch that pass. You've got Chavis Dawkins, another true freshman. A lot of young players for South Carolina offensively. Jake Bentley will hand it off to David Williams, his first carry. He's wrestled to the ground after a gain of four. So Jake Bentley connects on his second collegiate attempt. Yeah, watch the timing. Just sitting in the pocket, got under a little bit of duress, but an accurately thrown football. And I say accurately because anytime you're a true or a true freshman making your first start, you've got bodies around you. A little nerve wracking. He'll turn 19 next year, so by age, he's not as young as some. Debo Samuel on the end around, and he takes a pass midfield. In fact, he's only a week younger than Georgia's quarterback, Jacob Eason. Gain of eight there. Here's how UMass lines up on defense. And Deshaun Dowdy is a guy that can be, he may end up in the face of Jake Bentley all afternoon long. Six and a half tackles for a loss, four sacks on the season. Both lead the, lead the Minutemen's defense. So fresh set of downs for Jake Bentley. Asked Will Muschamp what's difficult about being a freshman quarterback in the SEC, and he answered, what isn't difficult? So many things on the plate of Bentley today. He had an extra week to prepare with the bye week. Here's Williams down the sideline. David Williams inside the 20, and finally shoved out of bounds by Jesse Montero. 
A highly recruited out of high school. He chose South Carolina over Ohio State, Arizona State, Tennessee, and Auburn. But a nice stretch play here, trying to get to the outside. Excellent edge blocks. Malik Young, the right tackle, with a terrific block on the outside. They'll keep it on the ground, and Williams gets undercut. Let me go back to this freshman quarterback, Andre, who yep. should have been starting for Opelika High School in Alabama last night. Instead, he's here playing in, as an SEC quarterback. What's going through his mind in terms of his nerves before his first start? Well, before that first pass, you saw a little bit of it to Debo Samuel, the wide receiver, just a simple screen pass, trying to get you know, a base set for him to get him implemented into this game slowly. But uh, a little bit of nerves, certainly. But once you have that first completion as a passer, now the confidence just starts to rise that, hey, I've done it in practice against our first team defense, which they worked during the bye week, ones against ones. And then all of a sudden you get the first completion to Brian Edwards. You settle into the game, and then it's just football from this point on for Jake Bentley. UMass's defense has been besieged by injuries. Joe Previty, third-year sophomore from Brockton, Mass, is the injured player being tended to by the athletic training staff. They're already without linebacker Shane Huber and Teddy Lowry. Enoch Asante is also out with an injury. Early timeout here in Columbia, two minutes in. Another hit to UMass's health. Joe Previty with an ugly elbow injury on that last play. And he was frustrated coming off the field. South Carolina struggled offensively. Nine offensive touchdowns. Fewest in the FBS. Comparison, Bama has 11 non-offensive touchdowns this season. They've got A&M this afternoon in a big SEC matchup. <laughs> Ali Ali Musa, Mario Patton, Peter Angay, and Peter Engobidi on the defensive line for UMass. That's three second string players. A.J. Turner, pardon me, Rico Dowdle is a South Carolina running back. Here's Dowdle. Cuts it back up against that D-line inside the 10, inside the 5, and he lost the football stretching. They'll say he's down at the 1. That's a 12-yard run for the freshman from Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, they, they he gives them a physical presence in the running game. It's a nice job. A.J. Turner can work the edges of the defense and then along with David Williams, but Dowdle comes in and he can really go between the tackles. Bentley hands it off again. Touchdown, South Carolina, Rico Dowdle. And the emotion and energy from the freshman quarterback, Jake Bentley. He was fist pumping into the end zone. One drive, and the youngster has South Carolina on the scoreboard. Yeah, big pass from Jake Bentley, true freshman, to Brian Edwards, true freshman, and then finishing the drive, Rico Dowdle, true freshman. Elliot Fry has hasn't missed an extra point in 133 consecutive attempts. That role will continue. South Carolina came into this game as three touchdown favorites against UMass. They had had a game where they scored 21 points all season long, but they're off to a great start here. And Will Muschamp said, we need to find a way to fix this offense. It's not all on the quarterback. It's not all about quarterback play, but you can see the impact that Jake Bentley makes on his very first drive. What a nice pass to Brian Edwards on the outside. That gives him a first down. And then the long run by David Williams to get him within striking distance. And then the touchdown by Rico Dowdle with a couple of excellent blocks by Zach Bailey, the left guard, and Alan Knott, the center. You did a great a big hole. Yeah, you did a great job, I thought, illustrating how young this South Carolina offense is and that pretends to the future for this program. Yeah. But the funny part about it is Will Muschamp is telling us we're making a change to win now. This isn't about next year or the year down the road. This is about getting wins in the bank this season. They need to win four out of six to go. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to compliment them in both ways this season. And they feel like right now Jake Bentley, six weeks in, gives them the best chance to win. It took maybe a little while to get himself associated with a system. I'll tell you what, they are uh, well on their way. Nice nucleus of young players for South Carolina. No return for Isaiah Rogers. UMass has had a shuffle at the quarterback position over the course of this season. They'll be without Ross Comis for the remainder of the year. Comis out with a knee injury, and so they turn it over to Andrew Ford. Originally started his college career at Virginia Tech. He making his fifth start today. He got up to a great start in a shootout against Louisiana Tech last week. 
He's a pure drop back passer and he hit on his first 11 attempts against Skip Holtz's squad last week. Yeah, Comas kind of, Ross Comas was the mobile quarterback. They felt like gave him a, an extra element to the offense, but Andrew Ford effectively moves this team. He was 72% last week. Three touchdowns, only one interception. You mentioned it, a pocket passer. Well, he is very good at it. And here's a pitch to Marquise Young. He's got great talent and speed, and he rips off a 12-yard run on the very first play. South Carolina's defense has given up too many big runs this season, according to Travaris Robinson. Here's how they line up. Yeah, if T.J. Holloman has his one of his better games, uh, look for that to change. Leader of the defense, that can make plays sideline to sideline. Quick hitter out of the backfield, it's Andy Isabella, their leading receiver, lined up in the backfield, and he picks up seven back-to-back -back big plays for UMass's offense. Well, we know Andrew Ford's got to get it done at quarterback, but he's got a ex-teammate that he played with in high school, Adam Brenneman, who uh, leads the team in receiving yards, re re excuse me, receptions with 35 to go along with 390 receiving yards and two touchdowns. He's in the slot left, former Penn State tight end, and the lefty looking that way. Ford over the middle, and that is tipped and incomplete. Near takeaway, he was trying to find Isabella. You see, and that's the difference. Not only the left hand, the left left arm that he throws with from Comas, but right there, Comas may have taken off with a little green grass in front of him. Andrew Ford's going to sit in the pocket, survey things down the field, and distribute the football. Neither offense has been good on third down this season, two of the worst in the FBS. South Carolina converted on their drive. Now Ford finds his tight end, Adam Brenneman, and they convert. So throw out the history. Neither offense could score. Neither offense could convert a third down and here first time out. They've both done it. Yeah, Brenneman's the move tight end. They will use shifts with him throughout the game, different motions. He can play in the slot, as you mentioned. Very versatile. The play action, Ford hiding it well, and the Southpaw able to go right back to Brenneman, and he fumbled. Scooped up by Chris LeMans, looking for some blocks. And LeMans will be taken down. South Carolina with the takeaway after the fumble by Adam Brenneman. Uh, the one thing, if you're UMass, that you can't afford to have happen when you go on the road is turn the football over. Nice drive by Andrew Ford being put together. You see Brenneman here, his favorite target. A nice job from T.J. Holloman coming from behind to strip the football out. Brenneman never saw him. And this is the end of it. Happening here with Chris Lamonts coming up with that fumble recovery. So another opportunity for freshman Jake Bentley. David Williams is his running back. Williams trying to find room on the left side. And he's able to deliver a lick on Kari Bailey-Smith, a gain of nine. South Carolina legend Marcus Lattimore sends out a tweet this morning. Surreal moment to see little bro Jake Bentley out there. Remember when he was a ball boy at Burns. Yeah. Proud to know him. His dad, a legendary high school football coach here in the Palmetto State up at Burns. Couple state championships. A ton of wins. Talked to his dad this morning. Said, yeah, he's been around this program, but this is a little bit different. There's some nerves there. I think his dad was more nervous than uh, than Jake himself. Now the running backs coach here at South Carolina, and his running backs having a great day today. Williams picks up the first down. Boy, what a spark. I mean, you, you can't put it all on one single position, but South Carolina has been abysmal in all marks offensively all season. 126 in the country in rushing yards, just better than 92. They already have 74 on the ground against this independent opponent today, UMass. The freshman Rico Dowdle spelling Williams in the backfield now. Bentley wide trying to find Hayden Hurst, a reliable tight end for South Carolina. Yeah, Hurst hooked inside and Bentley looked as though he expected him to run the, the hitch. Thought he hit him on the outside shoulder. Hurst ran it more like a curl. He came inside. So you're going to have some of that throughout the game where new quarterback, a bit different expectations and where the receivers will be. Bentley looks right, comes back screen left. Debo Samuel's got the sideline, and now it's a foot race. Samuel to the 20, and he dances his way down inside the five. Jesse Matero had the angle. It'll go for 47 yards. Yeah, this is the play they wanted to open the game with, and Jake Bentley 
led Samuel a little bit too far out front, and they missed on it to start the game. There, they were able to connect, and Samuel turned it in to a foot race. Rico Dowdle now in a tailback for South Carolina. Big play for Jake Bentley and Debo Samuel, perhaps the future of this program. Dowdle the future as well. And it takes a couple minute men to bring him down. Bailey Smith finally. By the way, that completion down the sideline in the screen to Samuel, the longest South Carolina pass all season. You see Dowdle runs through contact. You can see it on the touchdown run and then that last carry. Very talented player. He missed some time in camp with a sports hernia, but 100% now. Change of quarterback, McElwain in. Brandon McElwain, the freshman, goes right side, and he lost his footing. He's down inside the one. Will Muschamp told us yesterday you'll see two quarterbacks over the course of the game today. They want to get better in their drop-back game, and they want to get better at the zone read. Yeah, and this is what McElwain can do. When they get down inside the red zone, they, they are looking for production down on this end. He could give it to them. He gives it to Williams, and he's in for a touchdown. Couple of rushing touchdowns for the Gamecocks here in the first quarter. And they're handing it to one win UMass already. Just felt like they could be a little more physical in the trenches. Up front, gonna turn some turn this game over to the big offensive line and push and lean on UMass, who's a little bit smaller up front, certainly than South Carolina. Fry connects again. It all started with the hookup with Debo, which is kind of like when your dad asks you to go ask for your bike back. <laughs> this Debo gets caught up with after 47 <laughs> yards down the sideline, but that's quite all right for South Carolina. It sets up a touchdown plunge for David Williams, and the Gamecocks showing their feathers here early. What bike? Carolina offense with averages only two touchdowns a game already there today. Let's check out where to watch with the Heisman winner. What are you watching? Today? Yeah, and for UMass, it's, they, they have to limit the mistakes on offense and defense. That's where they get themselves into trouble already. The Brenneman fumble has led to seven points. And in South Carolina, they need production from Jake Bentley starting to get that as he gets his footing in this game. Defensive line needs to flat out dominate. That remains to be seen because... UMass had a drive going until the Brenneman fumble. They'd even completed and converted a third down. Isaiah Rodgers comes out of the end zone from the two-yard line. Rodgers gets spun out of bounds. We've got a flag on the play. Should add to UMass's field position. Yeah, it looks like a face mask. That's going to be 15 additional yards tacked on here. During the return, personal foul, face mask, 24 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Matt Austin, our white hat today. Just watch the end of this. Right at the end, they're just gra reaching in and grabbing a handful of face masks. D.J. Smith, it looks like. College football continues today, 4 o'clock on SEC Network. Middle Tennessee's in Como to take on Barry Odom's Missouri Tigers. And then tonight, Mississippi State, Kentucky. That's a big one. SEC Nation is there today. Who you got in the nightcap? I'm going to go with Mississippi State in that ball game. Kentucky good out of the gates, but uh, having trouble finishing. Mississippi State looking to bounce back from a loss in Provo, Utah to BYU that we got a chance to see last, last Friday night. Did you ever catch up in your sleep? I'm still thrown off a little bit. See Kai Lindsey in a tailback. They give it on an end around. Once again, Andy Isabella from the slot on that jet sweep, and he's able to take it for nine. DJ Smith forces him out of bounds. There have been some injury issues in the backfield for UMass. Marquise Young did not play in the second half against Louisiana Tech last week, and so they're trying to use Isabella yeah. in the backfield and out of the backfield. Yeah, it's no surprise that he leads him in receiving. Excellent possession receiver who runs nice, clean routes, knows how to get himself uh, open. A great speed, ran an 11 yeah. second 100 meters in the Atlantic 10 outdoors. Also won the Ohio 60 meters in high school. They fake that jet sweep and give us to Kai Lindsay. He wanted to go outside and try to fall back forward. Maybe got it. Dante Sawyer with the tackle, the junior from Swanee, Georgia. 
There's a head coach for the men and men, Mark Whipple, in his ninth season. Second in school history, 56 wins. It's his second go-round at UMass. He's coached some pretty good ones, Ben Roethlisberger being one when he was at, in Pittsburgh. Talk about a quarterback whisperer. This, this guy can coach him up. Lindsey got enough for the first down. UMass into South Carolina territory under the direction of left-handed quarterback Andrew Ford. He was an elite 11 quarterback coming out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Nothing doing Isabella. And South Carolina came away the football. Second takeaway. Sakai Lindsey and Andy Isabella couldn't figure out who wanted the football, so it's taken away by the Gamecocks. We talked to T. Rob. Tavares Robinson needed some turnovers in this game, wanted to find a way to make UMass turn the football over. Nice job by Keir Thomas. You know, a lot of programs run that play the opposite way, Andre. Another true freshman, by the way. Yeah, there's a lot of great future of the South Carolina program, but if you run that as a toss forward, that's an incomplete pass. If you try to get depth, that's a fumble. Yeah, no doubt about it, and the mistakes Plaguing UMass right now. Two fumbles and have led to seven points, and we're still charting. Jake Bentley trying to step out of the pocket and escape. We got a flag on the play, and he slides forward. This one likely coming back the other way. Well, likely a holding penalty up front. Offensive line, you ask him to hold up a little bit too long. Defenders or the D line starts, they start to come free. and now you're in a reach and grab Holding situation. Offense number 23, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. It's Rico Dowdle, the freshman. So if Jake Bentley stayed on schedule, he would have been playing last night for the Opelika Bulldogs, who beat the Pelham Panthers 35-17. Instead, he arrives in South Carolina a year early, he takes off his senior season of high school, and they originally planned for him to blue shirt. You've heard of red shirting, probably. You may have heard of gray shirting. Blue shirting is a term that... A lot of people aren't familiar with. Go to the screen again, and that one's incomplete. Trying to find it to Brian Edwards. And so our sartorial graphic will walk you through the different blouses out there. Red shirt, you get five years to complete four seasons, meaning you essentially take a season where you don't play. Green shirt, those are the guys who enroll a semester early. You start the spring term in January. You're eligible immediately. Gray shirt is guys that are asked to delay their enrollment by a year, and blue shirt's a little bit different. Well, Muschamp brought it up yesterday. I don't know how many of us in the room had ever heard of it. Mass loads up the box, and Rico Dowdle takes it the other way. So the plan for Jake Bentley yeah. originally was to come to campus, to be offered a delayed scholarship, meaning he wouldn't have been part of the 2016 recruiting class. Essentially pay his own way that he, first semester. He could have as a walk-on, but... In reality, this is a way to work around scholarship limitations per a specific class, and that would have applied to next year's class. As it turned out, South Carolina had another signee who didn't qualify academically, so Bentley was able to get his scholarship and be part of this recruiting class. And it saves a spot in 2017 for another recruit. Here's Debo Samuel. Gets dragged down by Steve Casale, gain of six. And a nice job by... UMass after the turnover to get themselves off the field holding up on third down there's coach Bentley the, the father of Jake had a chance to visit with him down on the field before the game you talk about nerves when your son's out there doing it for the first time all the football he's played but this is a little bit different on this level Sean Kelly punts it away flag from the side judge and that one goes into the end zone and it'll be a touchback that flags everywhere. I think every official emptied their pockets. Fifty one yard punt from Sean Kelly, who averaged a season high forty nine yards per punt in their last game against Georgia. South Carolina coming off of a bye week. Matt Austin. Illegal substitution on the receiving team. 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Well, I tell you right now, you go on the road, you cannot have penalties, and you can't turn the football over. And UMass has found a way to do both. Mark Whipple's team one and six this season. 
0-5 against the SEC since moving to the FBS. Now, it's not going to give South Carolina a first down, but what it will do is it will give them an opportunity to land this ball inside the 10-yard line. You're going to get it on the 20. Oh, it's a, a better punt here. And that'll back UMass up after that 38-yard punt. Some great history here in Columbia, South Carolina with this football program. And what we're seeing today, not the past, it's the future. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. Proud supporters of college football. It's good to be in good hands. And in part by Dr. Pepper and Dollar General, making smart plays this football season. Nearly two weeks every October, the South Carolina State Fair comes to Columbia on the 115 acres of fairgrounds just north of the stadium here. A little history for you. In 1861, the Confederacy used fair buildings as a place to make war munitions, and then Sherman's Army came through, burned the buildings down, and maybe those were the first fireworks here in the Palmetto State. 147th year for the South Carolina State Fair. I'll bring you some fried ice cream at halftime. Yeah, please halftime? do. I would love some. They fake the jet sweep again. South Carolina not fooled. Big stop, and it's a loss of four. James Allen came in from his cornerback spot to make the stop. And they really need to get Marquise Young going. He's a big part of this offense, the team's leading rusher, but right off the edge, creeping down inside. Bryson Allen Williams there to help out and make a stop. Marquise Young taking the direct snap, trying to find some room. No room, T.J. Hollum in there. Let's see what Cole Kubelik's got for us. Tom, I want to go back to that first down stop for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Traveris Robbins, defensive coordinator, told us about a knock look that they might have with the tackle over. You saw Jack Driscoll move over to the right side as an extra tackle on the right side of the offensive line. A nice job of recognition by the Carolina Gamecock defense. Got a line and were able to make a tackle in the backfield. You have to knock over the center to basically the guard next to the center. He becomes the middle of the offensive line, something they knew they were going to have to recognize today not that acronym new offensive center is how it spells out for that South Carolina defensive front Ford stands in the end zone trying to get out of trouble will loft it incomplete there's a big hit and that's going to oh, yeah. a flag I, I was waiting on the pass interference to come on the back end of it because I'm not sure the defensive back working against Jalen Williams but just just took a shot on him rather than playing the football I'm not sure he would have caught it anyway and certainly pass interference, and this is going to give UMass a first down and some breathing room offensively to open things up on, on offense. It's been a very physical week of practice for the South Carolina defensive unit. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. They return to fundamentals, a lot of tackling drills, and, well, this was a little too physical. It looked like Chris Moody. Right there with uh, just arriving way too early. <laughs> He's watching on the jumbotron. Yep, uh, yep, yep, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Eye in the sky does not lie. It's already the third flag against the Gamecocks today. UMass 120th in the nation in rushing offense. Marquise Young rips off five, but they had a great start to the season. Yeah. And early in the season, they were making some strides on the ground, and it, they weren't easy opponents. They had a great game on the ground against Florida to open the season down in the swamp. They had BC in week number two. And even the first half against Mississippi State, they ran the ball really well, but then the injuries started to catch up with this team. Empty here, five wide, and they try to go down the sideline incomplete, looking for Jalen Williams. And you think about the schedule that UMass has played, they're making a lot of money for it, but they're also taking a lot of hits against some big opponents and some big lines like Florida's and Boston College and Mississippi State, as we talked about. Yeah, we opened the season with them against Florida and you know, having a battle there, and it's just tough when you look at the schedule of UMass. Florida, Mississippi State. Let me hear to South Carolina. You're playing home games at two different stadiums. That's tough. They get Wagner next for the first time ever. Ford. Wow, fit it in. 
And a great hands by Andy Isabella. Gain of nine, and that's a first down. Chris Lamont's under coverage. Yeah, and he started his career as a running back, which is why they're not afraid to give it to him on speed sweeps. But watch the quickness in and out of breaks. Watch the hands at the end to finish. Nice ball placement as well by Andrew Ford. It's going to be high and outside where either Andy Isabella is going to catch it or it's going to be an incomplete pass. UMass has already turned it over twice, trying to take control of the ball and hold on to it here. Ford will hand it off to Young. Tried to turn the corner and is able to squirt up the middle for a gain of four. Chaz Elder playing with broken ribs and really banged up for yeah. South Carolina in to make the tackle. Broke him against Mississippi State a couple of weeks ago. A versatile player who's moved back to safety this year from cornerback. He saw action in just two games last year, but a very experienced player. Moves this system well, and he can operate just about on any level, whether you get him close to the line of scrimmage in the box or ask him to play as a true safety. Marquise Young. Sophomore from Fairport, New York, had a great finish to the season last year against Buffalo. Yeah, I like the way he runs the football. No nonsense, no hesitation. Just get into the line of scrimmage. There, full head of steam coming downhill. Take what you can get. Put the team in a third down and short situation here in order to pick up the first down. But a chance to see him, as I mentioned earlier, against Florida. He's a, he's a nice player. For UMass. Going to be around another couple of years, just a sophomore. They'll get reshoot. John Robinson Woodgett, fullback tailback combo in now on third and two. Play action. Ford lobs it to Isabella. And he can't make it. A gain of one. DJ Smith, the first man there for South Carolina to turn him back inside. That'll bring up fourth and one for UMass near midfield. Do you go for it? Yeah, I think so. It's about half a yard. Shy of the first down, I think so. I think you put Marquise Young back in the game and, and let him try to pick this baby up for you. Yeah, he left because his shoe came off, so he's got that shoe back on. It. The, the running backs for UMass have looked really tentative thus far today. And if it's short enough, I don't even mess around with the ball handling. I just put Andrew Ford under center and let him try to quarterback sneak it. But it's Young that's in the in the gun for them. He'll take the direct snap out of the Wildcat. Carolina shows blitz young able to get the edge in the first down for UMass there's some momentum for these Minutemen a gain of nine on the run by the sophomore running back and it's a weakness of South Carolina defensively giving up 173 yards a game but a nice job of getting to the edge no nonsense let's get downhill in a hurry Marquise young able to pick up the first down some nice edge blocks there for UMass as well Tenth play of the drive. UMass has turned it over 15 times this season. Twice today to stymie a couple of drives. Out of the backfield, Robinson Woodgett gets wrestled down by T.J. Holloman, fifth-year senior. Gain of seven. We talked with T.J. yesterday, and he was really pleased with what they're allowed to do defensively. This was a very predictable defense over the last couple of years with Steve Spurrier rotating through some different coordinators. Yeah, he makes all the calls for the defense. Great sideline-to-sideline -side player. Played in a lot of games, 42 in the last three seasons with 22 starts. South Carolina takes a timeout here with under a minute to go in the first quarter. UMass with its best drive of the day thus far. South Carolina leads UMass 14 to nothing. 56 seconds left in this first quarter. And, you know, for UMass, Andre, taking care of the ball. Yeah. It's, it's a premium allowing, today. Yeah, allowing the drive to continue. I mean, that's like the difference between the 28-30 yard line. No doubt. What you, want to look at. you put it on the ground. They were able to dodge a bullet when uh, you had the fumble of the last possession, and now moving it again. They haven't had trouble moving the football. It's both times they've had it, and this one they've been able to move the ball. You see, the two turnovers led to a touchdown, but a seven points. But they moved the football. It's just you have to take care of it. Second. And three, Sakai Lindsay is in a tailback. And Lindsay will pick up the first down. Interesting 
scenario a couple of plays ago. UMass wasn't happy with this SEC officiating crew because they stood over the ball to allow South Carolina to get their subs in. That is supposed to happen when the offense has sub guys in. And yeah. you see Andrew Ford talking with the center official saying, wait a second. We, we didn't bring any new personnel in. Let us snap the football. You're absolutely right. And they've got a legitimate gripe in that sense. If you don't sub offensively, then the defense, you're not holding it for the defense to make substitutions. Maybe they're just working on the assumption. UMass doesn't sub a lot, but they shift a lot. They will motion to different formations, even though they run a lot of the same plays. Window dressing, if you will. Four deep ball incomplete. Trying to find Isabella, Chaz Elder with the coverage. Yeah, I mean, and he's, they're trying to run an Isabella on a corner route, but nothing underneath to pull coverage up, to give him a, a little bit of room as you flatten it out. Here's Isabella, Isabella the last three games, 15 receptions, averaging about 10.8 yards per reception, and then the four touchdowns. Very productive player for this UMass offense. This is the 13th play of the drive for UMass. They got what they want inside already, just on alignment. A little pitch to Marquise Young. They've run this a couple of times. It's good for another first down. And this UMass team is driving, gain of 16. Exploiting a weakness. This is a weakness of this South Carolina defense to get out on the edges and defend the run. And Marquise Young, he's got speed. He can run with power. On a couple of occasions, we saw it on fourth and short where he was able to pick up the first down. So we've seen the future of this South Carolina program with some great offensive plays today. Unfortunately, in this drive for the Gamecocks, the present still rearing its ugly head. Defense can't get off the field. South Carolina, though, a couple takeaways, and they lead this one 14-0. have been the biggest hindrance to the Minutemen's defense, uh, offense, I should say, so far today. Turned it over twice. South Carolina has one touchdown over it. Came on the very first drive, by the way, when UMass was moving the football. And now Mark Whipple's team with its longest drive of the day, and Andrew Ford has them inside the red zone. Well, they need six points here to get back in this game, make sure that it doesn't get away from them here early in the first half. Blitz coming. Ford stands tall, fires in zone. Touchdown! Adam Brenneman, a 14-yard strike between the former high school teammates. Well, they bring the blitz. Brenneman gets inside position, and Andrew Ford throws an absolute dime. Watch him come back inside, working against Chaz Elder. Had a couple of steps on the safety. Andrew Ford was home this past summer, needed someone to throw to, so he called up Adam Brenneman, who had previously ended his collegiate career after knee injuries at Penn State. Now they end up on the same field for UMass, and a scoring strike is a 14th touchdown pass of the season for Ford. Brenneman's third touchdown as Caggiano knocks through the extra point. These two guys go back a ways, both Pennsylvania natives, Brenneman, Started his career at Penn State. Ford started his at Virginia Tech. Enrolled there in January of 14. But here they were at Cedar Cliff High School. That logo on the helmet looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. Some Indianapolis ap action. Well, ben uh, Brenneman ended up at Penn State. Was a freshman All-American there. Well, they go two tight ends. And watch Travis Reynolds. He's going to clear things out and allow Brenneman to start outside like he's going vertical. Then he'll, he'll cut inside and watch the timing from Andrew Ford. Right here, nice job in the middle of the field with his blitz. Comes wide open for Adam Brenneman. Boy, that's well timed up. Coming right at you, right near your living room. Well, that's pretty. My living room isn't that big. <laughs> Seven seconds into the second quarter, and UMass is on the board for the first time. Shot Fenton back to receive this one from Caggiano. From the two. Fenton bounces this one outside. Beautiful cutback into UMass territory. 
It's a 50-yard return for Rashad Fenton, the sophomore from Miami's Carroll City High School. Martin Mangrum finally brought him down. Well, another young player, just a sophomore. Watch the return. Starts it right, then cuts left, and then it's a foot race. You get everybody drawn inside, thinking that you're going to go right. Well, this is nice. Good work here, and then why the cutback, as you described, to pick up a couple of extra yards to finish the run. That's nice. Good work. Jake Bentley, a quarterback for South Carolina that took off his red shirt metaphorically to start this game today. He's with David Williams in the backfield. And Williams trying to find room on the right side. Kind of an odd timeline for Bentley. We've got a flag on the field. He's a four-star <laughs> prospect coming at him. Opelika High School. That's maybe a hold on Malik Young, the right tackle. Kind of grab one of the Minutemen defenders and take him down. Holding, offense number 77, 10 yard penalty, still first down. Now watch 77, the right tackle will show up in your screen right there, and then just a, a grab, and it's a nice takedown. Wrong sport. <laughs> Going just along for the ride on a nice fall afternoon. So that'll back up the Gamecocks. Bentley on first down. Fits it in complete to Chavis Dawkins. Bentley took unofficial visits to Stanford, Florida State, Bama, Georgia, and Auburn. He played at Burns High School as a youngster before his family moved to Alabama. His dad was an analyst on Gus Malzahn's staff at Auburn as a high school junior threw for 2,800 yards. Will Muschamp pointed out to us, though, that they had a plan for Bentley to graduate early. The Opelika School District didn't see it that way, so Jake Bentley had to leave Opelika High School and go to Spartanburg, South Carolina to finish his last class to get his high school diploma. And that was tipped, and Debo Samuel couldn't haul it in. Well, and I tell you what, I was down on the field watching Jake Bentley warm up, and he is not, you know, supposed to be a senior. He is well put together for a guy that was supposed to be a senior in high school. He's every bit of 6'3", every bit of 223 pounds. And you'll see on the end of this, to the showing you the strength that I just described, You're able to get that ball, break a tackle, and then he throw a, a ball out to Debo Samuel that should have been caught. Yeah. He is well put together. I did not look like that when I came out of high school. <laughs> it leaves third and 14. Bentley with the deep ball, and that is caught for a first down by Terry Gouger. We'll see if the marker's good enough. He's right there. He may be about, he is right there. Maybe a half yard short, or may have gotten it by a half yard. They're going to mark this just short of the, of the first down mark. They're going to bring Brandon McElwain in to run this fourth and short play. Gujar is a solid route runner for South Carolina with excellent hands. Doesn't have the breakaway speed, but can he catch it, catch the ball? McWayne on the zone read will keep it, and he gets wrestled down shy of the line of scrimmage, and they won't pick it up. I think he's going to be short here. Ali Ali Musa in to make the stop for UMass. One of the complaints for the South Carolina coaching staff has been in the zone read game, and it's all about the read. They say if you don't make the read correctly, it doesn't matter what you do or how much talent you have, and that was a focus of theirs over the bye week. UMass trying to find some momentum. Perhaps they got it with that long offensive drive. Maybe they get it with this fourth down stop, and they build on it as Ali Ali Musa swallows up Brandon McElwain. Celebrating its 12th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Turnover on downs for South Carolina. What would you think of that fourth down play call? Well, big play by Ali Alamusa to stop him just short of the first down marker. And now I, th I think I'd take a shot here. Great field position. Quarterback Andrew Ford go downtown. They want to do that on play action. He's got all day. Lefty flushed right. 
And that is caught by Brenneman. Nope, they say out of bounds. Jamarcus well, King, the junior from Mobile, Alabama, with the cover. They wanted to go to Andy Isabella, who was just about to come open when Andrew Ford got the pressure. He's loading up to take this, take the deep shot, which we described. And right there, coming off a block by Kelsey Griffin, the senior from Buford, Georgia, comes free and just gets uh, Andrew Ford off his launch point. Seemed like UMass had some momentum. Coming off the fourth down stop, Marquise Young grabs that momentum and takes it right up the middle of the field. First down, minute man, a gain of 16, and he's a big energy guy. He got some pushing and shoving well away from the play. Afterwards, between one of the DBs, Chris Lamont and Jalen Williams. A little acting going on as well, but Marquise Young is going to be one heck of a player for this UMass program. No nonsense, runs away from T.J. Holloman, and once again, problem stopping the running game, rearing its ugly head for South Carolina. Young now split out wide, empty backfield for Andrew Ford. Pressure from the edge, hit, lob, and it'll fall incomplete. Darius English brought the pressure from the edge. Yeah, watch the left side of the line here. I think it's going to come from this area right around, right out on the edge. Actually, it's the edge player. Maybe Chris Moody once again making a play. Excuse me, Darius English, who is their, by far their best pass rusher. Talked to Tavares Robinson yesterday and said he is really playing well as a senior. Young. Gets spun down by Bryson Allen Williams and spun out of it. Ends up losing a yard. Well, this is where you want to stay away from if you're UMass. Third downs, only 26% coming into the season and converting them on third downs. Mark Whipple wants a timeout. He wants to talk about this one. Whipple's coached some great quarterbacks in his time. And now he's got Andrew Ford and company trying to keep this drive alive. First time around as the head coach of UMass, Mark Whipple got off to a great start. In his first year, UMass won the Division I AA national title in 1998. They were the 11th seed that year. They forced seven turnovers in the title game to turn into 31 points as the upset top-ranked Georgia Southern 55-43. It was one of three trips to the national title game for this UMass program, which this year is playing its toughest schedule ever. It's her first year as an independent, and that could be tough going. Teams like Army, Notre Dame, and BYU have great advantages as independents, specifically when it comes to budgets. But Mark Whipple has a, a tough task ahead of him this year. They still have a remaining game at BYU and at, floor, at Hawaii, pardon me, that won't be easy. There's Il Isabella and Brenneman. Keep an eye on those two side by side in this formation. Third and ten for four. Intercepted. T.J. Holloman. You were right. They were looking for Isabella. And Holloman, who we talked about early, or at the top. Big time playmaker, sideline to sideline player, and right there, right off the hands. You'll see Isabella crossing from outside in and hit him just about in the face mask. Third turnover today for UMass. What's amazing about it is if he catches it cleanly, he may outrun Holloman, who had him in coverage to the first down marker. So that momentum right out the window as Rico Dowdle takes it for eight. Kari Bailey Smith the stop for the minute. Three fumbles, or two fumbles and an interception. Three turnovers for UMass here in the first quarter. You're on the road, SEC Stadium. It's tough to win on the road as it is, but you're going to gift turnovers to South Carolina, freshman quarterback or not. It's tough to win.
Rico Dowdle. True freshman from A.C. Reynolds High School in Nashville, North Carolina. Got his first start a couple weeks ago against Georgia. He's been out the first four games of the sports tournament. Great All-America, first-team All-State performer. He's a big-time prospect. Yes, he is. Good speed. Run between the tackles, and you see there, his average per carry at 6.2 to get this game started. Trips to the field side. You see this formation a lot. Hayden Hurst, the former baseball player, takes it up and is able to rip off a nice gain of nine. Well, he spent some time in the Pirates organization. That's your team. Yes, it is. He moved from wide receiver. Ask him to put on some a couple of extra pounds and move to tight end. Well, he's big enough now, 6'5", 250 pounds, and didn't lose much speed. He's used to changing positions. His professional baseball career got started as a pitcher before they moved him to first base. Walked on to this South Carolina team last year. Nothing doing on the left side of the line. And that will bring up third and one. Shocky holiness with the stop for UMass. Happens to be the team's best pass rusher in there, showing some versatility in the run game. Led the team last year, last season, with nine tackles for a loss. He can really cause problems off the edge. Just like they did on fourth and one here on third and one, Brandon McElwain in to take the snap. And he'll hesitate before going over left side for the first down, gain of four. Well, there's no speed sweep to, to really have to consider. He was coming downhill. Cole and I were talking when we went to commercial break. Why did, you know, in short yardage situations, why mess around with it? Get engaged. Once you get the snap, get north and south. As opposed to even trying to fool the defense to think you're going to go to the edges. Just get straight ahead and into the, into the line of scrimmage. Two tight ends here. Williams. Oh, he got lit. A yard behind the line of scrimmage by Jesse Montero. Montero's been playing nickel. He's really in as a strong side linebacker for Teddy Lowry here. Yeah, playing because of injuries, but watch him come up here. Nice job. That's about as well a form tackle as you can have. Guy coming downhill at you. You're going to get a little bit lower than he is. There's a lot of things well, according to the coaching staff, for this defense. Coming off of an 11 tackle performance against Skip Holtz's Louisiana Tech team. Second and 11. See if Jake Bentley, the freshman, recognizes the defense and made the right call, but didn't get it done in time, and a timeout taken by South Carolina. Timeout South Carolina. Second time out of the half. Carolina down to one timeout, up a touchdown here. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Valero, the power of the American dream, and the DQ 5 Buck Lunch, now available all day for a limited time. I had 10 on number four to finish the win, and pigs may not fly, but they can't swim, and we'll do anything for a little snack at the end, won't we? That's at the South Carolina State Fair, just adjacent to the stadium right now, going on for the last couple weeks. Waiting on that food at halftime. Saving up just for, would you say the fried ice cream? Yeah, they actually, haven't had that. I'm a, they market it as fried butter, and that's fine with me and Homer Simpson, but I believe it's ice cream. Here's a tunnel screen to Debo Samuel, and he gets taken down after a gain of four. Yeah, after giving up the big play to Samuel on that same exact play, and all of a sudden UMass has started to play that well. They're going to force Jake Bentley to put the ball down the field, force it down the field a little bit, 7 of 11, 98 yards, but he has yet to really challenge deep down the field. I watched one of their fall practices here in person, and he was going deep every chance he got. Wants to let one go here, and he unloads it, diving catch in zone, touchdown South Carolina, Casey Crosby, asking, a beautiful pass. Asking you shall receive.
First touchdown pass for Jake Bentley's career. It's a first touchdown pass at home this season for the South Carolina offense. 16 yards. Perfect touch to Casey Crosby. Uh, the first of many more for Jake Bentley. Just a talented passer. You could see it in warm-ups. Very confident. And a mistake on the snap in the hole. A little fire drill. South Carolina unable to find the point after. What a nice job here. Watch the touch. Just over the top, drops it right. Right over the shoulder of the defender. Second touchdown catch of the season for Crosby. Look at the energy Jake Bentley is bringing to this program. And Brandon McElwain, his classmate, first off the sideline to congratulate him. The season South Carolina was averaging just two touchdowns a game, 128th in the nation. Can't get much worse than that. They have 20 in the first half today. South Carolina had only thrown two touchdown passes the entire season, six games in. Jake Bentley, ready with his first one. He's going to throw a lot more than that. They have matched their season high in scoring. Isaiah Rodgers will take the knee in the end zone. This college football season, stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit watchespn.com today. Stick around at the half. You can watch a live performance of South Carolina's Carolina Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Well, this is one play at a time. I know it sounds like a cliche, but for UMass, it's one play at a time. You need to put a drive together. They've shown throughout this game or here in the first half that they they can move the football against South, South Carolina's defense. Find some protection for Andrew Ford. Stop putting the ball on the ground. Get back in this game. Three turnovers for UMass. Isabella on the motion takes the toss. And he gets undercut. And that play just hasn't worked today. And that toss to try to get in more depth once it's uh, resulted in a fumble. And this time, Chris Lamont blows it up for a five yard loss. Well, he usually moves inside in their nickel packages. But here, coming from the edge, against when you have a tight end on the field, gets inside. I'll tell you what, you've got to get some hands on him. And Jonah, the receiver in the game, has got to do a better job of blocking on Chris Lamont. Nothing doing on second and 15. I want to go back to the jet sweep, Andre. It's such a staple for so many offenses this season. Yeah. And we've had coordinators tell us before, when we run it deep, it's because we don't want a whole lot of traffic right behind our offensive line. It's usually because they're concerned about penetration. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you get any push, it throws the timing of the play completely off. So they'll bubble behind a little bit. But what it does as well is if you, you have a guy like Chris Lamaz that gets up the field, and it is tough to uh, to execute. Again, nothing doing. South Carolina stout against the run. Marquise Young had nowhere to go, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Well, selling out against the run. As South Carolina, a lot of bodies crowding the line of scrimmage. Quavius Lewis making a nice play there. He's had a nice senior year, off to a pretty good start, 25 tackles, a couple of tackles for a loss, and then a fumble recovery this year for South Carolina. Logan Lawrence has been sick, battled strep last week, only kicked one day in practice this week. He gets the punt off from the 38-yard line. Chris Lamonds stretches forward. That's been an issue for South Carolina all season. The punt return game has been abysmal. That's positive, 42-yard punt. 19 yard return so Lamont's settling in at special teams and come up with a big hit on defense fighting off the block to take down Isabella.
all week that Jake Bentley would get that red shirt taken off. The only question was whether or not he would start. He has, and he's already tied South Carolina's largest offensive production of the season. We're not yet to halftime. That time, a little too strong out in front of his intended receiver. Well, big difference for South Carolina today has been their starting field position. It's been their own 27. Yeah. That's one of the worst in the country coming into today, but today their own 42. Return game has been part of that defense and takeaway is a big part today. Yeah, Coach McClendon, he told us, or Kurt Roper told us, 80% of their drive started inside their own 30-yard line. You don't have production at quarterback. That's a that's tough trying to score. On second and ten, here's Rico Dowdle. And if you look at the raw numbers from the field position for South Carolina, coming into today they had 71 drives. Nine of them had started inside their own ten. Only five had started in their opponent's territory across the 50-yard line. So, well, Muschamp's team has gone through three quarterbacks now this season. He went through a handful at Florida. South Carolina's had a revolving door at the position over the last three or four years. Maybe this guy will settle it down. He's perfect on third down today. Right tackle maybe in the backfield here. No flag. Bentley tipped and incomplete. And there's a flag. Terry Guzier, the intended receiver. Malik Young was lined up in a flying V formation. <laughs> Trying to get a head start. Some guys come in a little bit too fast for him off those edges and he's trying to get a jump. Pass interference, defense number 39. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Isaiah Rogers, the freshman from Tampa, Florida. We're going to take a look at this pass interference on Rogers. You know, the funny thing. A little early. Go ahead. Well, the funny thing for Mark Whipple is he was complaining about the officials after the game against Louisiana Tech, and he said the beauty of being an independent is I don't have a commissioner to answer to. The bad part about it is I don't have a league that I can send my complaints to, and we just get a hodgepodge of officials out here, but he's not going to get fined. Deep ball, Bentley again, got a man, and it's incomplete. Rodgers with the coverage on Debo Samuel, able to break it up. That's an aggressive mindset. We saw from Jake Bentley in the fall scrimmage, and we talked to Kurt Roper about yesterday. Well, you can tell Jake Bentley's played a lot of football because that ball's thrown with pressure coming right into his face. And look how accurately it's thrown. It gives Samuel an opportunity to make a play, but he, had, he was under tremendous pressure when he let that one go. And part of playing quarterbacks, courage, willing to stand in there Throw the ball when you know you're going to take a shot. Tunnel screen. Samuel gets it straight up the field and takes it inside the 25. Colt? Tom, the thing that's impressed me more than anything with Jake Bentley being down here on the sideline is a couple plays where he's had to move some guys around, a couple plays where the play clock was winding down, had to get the snap quickly. Really has kept his composure very well and managed the players around him, whether it's in huddle or going hurry up. And they have picked up the tempo a few times. He's been able to manage that perfectly, something that's not necessarily expected, especially against a front that's going to give you a lot of unorthodox looks. Yeah, I want to go back a couple of plays ago, him getting through some reads. Third and five, blitz coming, deep ball again. It is caught! Touchdown, South Carolina! Brian Edwards hauls it in. Bentley's thrown for a pair. And a couple of true freshmen having big days for South Carolina. And welcome to college football, Jake Bentley. Snap issues on the last point after. Drew Williams has this one better. Sean Kelly to hold and fly with the main. He throws a beautiful ball. Jake Bentley to Brian Edwards. And he's slowly earning the respect of teammates. You see here under pressure again, but knows how to put some air under the football to allow the 6'3 Brian Edwards to climb the ladder and make a nice grab. And how about that? That's what it's all about on a Sunday, Saturday afternoon, having a little fun. 
You think he's watched some football? Oh, he's a lot right. of that reminded me of Brett Favre right there. <laughs> the look, the fingers to the sky, the number, and high stepping it to the crowd. Yeah, no doubt. He's, he, he is a gym rat. That's what the coaches tell us. Kurt Roper, as well as Will Muschamp, he's always watching film, processing things, and you know, just learning. And he's put himself in a position to play, and not only play in this offense, but to play well. Jake Bentley, 11 of 17, couple of touchdowns in 149. You know, and he's had some drops. I mean, where he's hit guys right in the hands, a throw away or two. Rodgers from the goal line. Stutter steps and will carry it to the 25-yard line. 27 7 Tom Hart alongside Heisman winner Andre where you remember back to your freshman year at the University of long Houston. time ago it, it was a little bit ago <laughs> but you started as a freshman yeah. what was going through your mind and what do you see going through Bentley? just nerves and and what you want to do is get the first completion you want to put start to stack completions together and then all of a sudden the confidence starts to bubble out now you know or you've proven it not only to your teammates but to yourself that hey I can do this once the nerves are gone now it's just a football game on a Saturday there was some risk involved in this move. You take a red shirt off of a kid six games into the season. If it doesn't work out, you cost him a year. Yeah, but I, I think Will Muschamp and this, this staff, they've kind of uh, massaged this just right in terms of when to do it, not asking him to do too much where he's overwhelmed. Ford's got a man wide open down the middle of the field. Busted coverage and Jalen Williams inside the five and into the end zone. A 74-yard touchdown strike from Ford to Williams. Wow. Just like that. He's their best receiver, according to the coaching staff, but he's been hurt. He's been banged up. He's the veteran of this group, and they just leave him. The safety, the Sam linebacker, Chris Moody, everybody turns him loose, and then you get couple of players, D.J. Smith, that had an opportunity. Instead of making the tackle, he goes for the strip, and Jalen Williams steps right out of it. Williams from over in Kennesaw, Georgia, North Cobb High School. Was really banged up in fall camp and early this season. Extra point is good from Caggiano. So Andrews Ford with his 15th touchdown pass of the season, second of the day. He's thrown two touchdown passes or more in five of the last six for UMass. Just watch Jalen Williams. He's just going to come wide open. Everybody here is going to forget the safety, the corner. They just turn him loose. Watch him. I and mean, he's just throwing that hand open. You see Chris Moody, he gets out of position. He's at least seven yards behind the secondary. Now it's just make a tackle. Make a for sure tackle. Forget the strip which is exactly what D.J. Smith goes for. Instead of making this tackle, he goes for the strip, misses, and that allowed Williams to just step into the end zone. Right, Just like that, UMass right back in the ball game. UMass has been on the precipice in this game. Just, just right there on the edge trying to grab momentum. It seems they've had it a time or two. Will Muschamp coaching up Chris LeMond. And that would make you think that perhaps LeMond was supposed to, supposed to stick with Williams. Well, I know there's a safety that's supposed to help over the top in that too deep look. Whether they were rotating, you, you can't allow a guy to just run free, freely down the, the middle of the field. No return for South Carolina. Let's take a look at playing with style. Brought to you by Bell. Freshman Jake Bentley with a couple of beautiful touchdown passes in his first half. Yeah, Casey Crosby here with a nice grab. And he follows it up with a true freshman, Brian Edwards. Nice touch on both passes in that same corner of the end zone pretty much. And that's the electricity that he brings to this football team. But I tell you what, you know what that touchdown pass just did for Andrew Ford? Put a little more pressure back on, on Jake Bentley because now he can't just go play freely with that lead. All of a sudden, he's still in a football game where he's got to continue to manage it. 
They go trips to the field side and they get it out there to Debo Samuel. A one block. Nice. Breaks free. Stutter steps his way to a first down. Fantastic vision for Debo Samuel. What a difference it makes to have he and Brian Edwards healthy. They've both been fighting through hamstring injuries throughout the season. You know, coaches live in the now. You can't convince Will Muschamp, but every once in a while they'll peek into the future. You can't convince him that, it, you know, the future is more important than right now. But Debo Samuel, just a sophomore. We talked about Brian Edwards, a true freshman. You got a true freshman quarterback, running back. The future is bright offensively for South Carolina. They go right back to a screen to the right side and Brian Edwards. And Edwards is able to pick up four. And on top of all that that I just mentioned, they've got all or four out of five offensive linemen, with the exception of Mason Zandy, the left tackle, coming back for next year. So you know, there's, a, there's a lot in the cupboard for Will Muschamp going forward. But there was a lot missing when he took this job. No he doubt was very about candid it. with us yesterday. He said, listen, I knew exactly what was on the table when I took this job. I knew what the shortcomings were. And people ask me all the time, wait a second, we're struggling. You're two and four this year. You've won one SEC game. How can you be positive? He goes, I look out there and see how I young these guys are. And I got players that uh, I can build with. There's the, there's the youth on the roster. 78 of 115 players. They're either freshmen or sophomores, six, almost 68% of his roster. That's the, that's the reason he can be excited about the future. And then you're going to add younger players in another recruiting class. And they pretty much, they have a staff that can go anywhere in this area, or this region of the country, and all the way down into Florida to bring players in. Doesn't take long to fix what's, what's broken. Jackie Holiness a little banged up, and he will be helped to the sideline. Already without Enoch Asante on that uh, one of those end positions. Deshaun Downey has been injured, and I don't know if Downey's been on the field yet today. I know he wasn't out there earlier, at least to start the game. Out there now, and some snaps. And no explanation from UMass is why he didn't play the first series. Bentley hands it off. Steve Casale come up, comes up to make the stop after a gain of three by Rico Dowd. They're without UMass, without their their leader and Shane Uber, leading tackler, a guy that can certainly make some make a lot of plays for him. He's out. He's in a lot defensively. Pressure again, incomplete. Trying to find Gujer away from the pressure. That's what they want to do to Jake Bentley. Put some pressure on him, and I think he's held his composure extremely well here in the first half with all the pressure that UMass is trying to bring. They want to force him into making a mistake, force him to get rid of it quickly and maybe target the wrong receiver at the wrong time or throw the timing off just enough where he makes a mistake and they can capitalize. Deep ball on third down. Nobody there. Another. Corey Banks cut off his uh, route, it looked like. And another blitz on third and seven, and they're able to force it out of his hands. Again, he throws inside. The receiver, Edwards, goes outside, and they're going to force a punt here. Watch the pressure here. It's coming right in the middle of the formation, and they push the pocket just enough to force the errant throw. UMass only with 10 men on the field for this punt return. Fair catch asked for. And South Carolina will down it inside the 20. Plenty of time here for Mark Whipple and his offense. 121, two timeouts. Clock will stop with each first down. Let's see if he tries to roll the dice to go down and add some more points here before the first half is over. Well, college football coming your way today for Old Field, Columbia, Missouri. The side is Middle Tennessee heads to Como for our game next. And then tonight under the lights in Lexington, Mississippi State taking on the Wildcats. SEC college football all day today on SEC Network. You see John Calipari on SEC Nation dump a couple of nice passes in today. It's like everybody's got questions at quarterback. If you're bottom to your team in the league right now, right. you got big time questions. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, uh, South Carolina had plenty of questions coming into this ball game, but 
We seem to have answered for the short term at least uh, that those questions about quarterback with Jake Bentley. They'll keep it on the ground. A couple of yards at time for Marquise Young. Credit Javaris Robinson, the defensive coordinator of South Carolina. They were getting gashed in the first quarter in the running game, and he made some adjustments up front. And at one point, it had gone for like negative four yards the last their last four or five carries. Hey, are you surprised, though? They had some time to work with, as you mentioned. They got two timeouts. They're averaging totally. 18 yards of completion. You don't take a shot? Totally surprised that uh, that you're not speeding things up. You'll often hear me say that you cannot score enough points in the first half of a ball game, whether leading or behind. And so another conservative call to keep it on the ground. And UMass seemingly content to let the clock run out to close the half. The flip side of that, obviously, is if you drop your quarterback back, you've already turned it over three times today, and you could give up points right before the half. Yeah, to my point, UMass, the first quarter, they were averaging about five and a half yards a carry. And in the second quarter, that was adjustments by Trevor Trevaris Robinson, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, has cut it to about two and a half or 2.2 yards per rush. Just really stymie UMass's running game. So back and forth affair between two teams that have a combined three wins, a lot more entertaining than it seemed to be on paper. Cole Kubelik will catch up with Coach Muschamp coming up on the Cooper Tire Halftime Report. Our score in Columbia, Gamecocks 27, Minutemen 14. The Jake Bentley era has started indeed for Carolina, and it looks promising. Now to Peter Burns with the Cooper Tire Halftime Report with Tony Barnhart. Joe Williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, 27 14. Gamecocks behind freshman Jake Bentley have the lead. You're watching SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Welcome back, everybody. Tom Hart Heisman winner Andre Ware. You know a little something about starting your first game as yeah. a freshman. This moment hasn't been too big for Jake Bentley. It really hadn't. And what I've been impressed with was him taking care of the football and really going through progressions and getting the football to the right receivers. Watch here as he scans the formation. This pass play designed to go right middle left three receivers eliminated before he hits the check down then he finds KC Crosby nice teardrop pass in the corner of the end zone follows it up with a second touchdown pass dropping one off the table to Brian Edwards hey what playing well beyond his years as a true freshman he'll be 19 next month he was going to be a senior in high school before he decided to enroll early and in his very first start, first action, 13 of 21 for 168. Let's go down to the field, check in with Cole Kubelik. Tom, on the other side of the football, overheard some of the South Carolina defensive staff talking about getting a push, and they're going to emphasize getting into the backfield. This pocket has not collapsed quick enough for the Gamecocks. That was the first pass of over 50 yards this season. The Gamecocks had given up best in the SEC. Going to need a pass rush to make sure that doesn't happen again in the second half. UMass had some opportunities. They had some momentum. Mark Whipple, though, decided to get to the half in that last possession. They'll lean on Darius English, their best pass rusher, to try to get there. Look for South Carolina as well, especially in this first possession. It's essential that they force a punt and get themselves get the football back, and not allow you UMass. To go down and score to keep this ball game close. Isaiah Rogers bobbing his head a moment ago. Music stops and here's the return. We start the second half with a hurdle and he takes it to the 30 yard line before being put on his back. Turnover is a key for UMass in the first half as we check out the numbers. 213 yards of offense to 290 for South Carolina, but the three turnovers were costly. Yeah, T. Rob, he did a nice job. Their defensive coordinator, 85 rushing yards, but 70 of that came in the first quarter. He made some adjustments up front and limited UMass to just 15 yards rushing in the second quarter. And then on the on the flip side of that, I think uh, South Carolina's done a nice job on third downs where they've struggled this year. 62 percent, five of eight in the third down conversion department for the South Carolina offense. Andrew Ford has thrown two touchdowns. He's also thrown a pick. He's got Marquise Young in the backfield next to him. Good starting field position for the Minutemen. A little option look on the pitch to Young. He's got the edge. 
and gets wrapped up after a gain of six on first down. D.J. Smith, the junior from Walton High School in Marietta, Georgia with the stop. And making sure that he makes that tackle. Allowed Jalen Williams to get away when he went for the strip on the long touchdown pass that uh, Cole referenced here to start the second half. They get it outside quickly to Young just past the hand of T.J. Holloman and they'll <laughs> yeah. be looking at a third and less than one. Look how close Holloman came to a second pick. Yeah, almost hit that second pick. I mean, it was hand delivered on a tray to pick that one off. Just get the hands up and you got a chance to make a play in, in a foot race with the quarterback Andrew Ford to the to the end zone. He's the voice of the defense for South Carolina making sure everyone's lined up properly third and one. Straight ahead. Young hit and it'll depend on the spot. Yurik Jones right there. First contact for South Carolina. Well, certainly a favorable spot but I think they're still going to have to measure this one got completely turned around. I thought they would go left because that was the strength of South Carolina's offense. The bubble, which is the uncovered guard, was over the left guard. Fabian Holair. Mark Whipple not happy with that spot, Andre, and they'll have fourth and inches now. They're going to keep the offense on the field. Marquise Young in a wildcat. Let's come in, and they blow it up. The pressure came right in his face. It was Bryson Allen Williams, first man there, left to Lorenz Bryant to clean it up. Well, it never got started in a couple of short yardage situations. This is where UMass has gone, That putting Marquise Young in the shotgun, and you'll see him come from the left side of the, or the right side of the offense's formation. Watch Bryson Williams right here make his way inside. Gets a nice jump on the snap count and comes free untouched to the lap of Marquise Young. Oh, what a nice play when we, and to make it once you get there. So great starting field position after the turnover on downs. Jake Bentley the freshman quarterback. They run left with Rico Dowdle and UMass there to blow it up. Steve Casale is coming in from his linebacker spot. Cole, what do you see? Tom, we've seen that A-gap blitz from the inside linebackers of UMass multiple times in this game. They like to pick and choose where they bring their pressure from. I thought you would see the majority of it come from the edge against the South Carolina defense whose tackles have struggled, especially in pass protection, but trying to attack the A-gaps here early. A-gap just between the center and guard. Coming right off that center, Allen Knott. That time past left guard, Zach Bailey. It's a loss of three. Pressure from the edge this time, Cole. And they're going to go deep down the sideline. Separation was there. Pass is incomplete. Debo Samuel had a step on Lee Moses. But the ball just hung up a little bit. Boy, you could see it coming. Not sure where, which way, the which direction the wind's blowing. But he, he does a very nice job of putting air under the football. I tell you what, if anything, it's it should have been pass interference on Moses. He never turned around, just threw his hands up, face guarding. Everything spells pass interference, yet the flag never hit the field. Third and 13, pressure coming up the middle again. Casali will get there, and he wraps up Jake Bentley. It's a loss of nine, and while UMass gambled going for it on fourth down, their defense able to get them out of that hole. Yeah, talking with Tomasella, the defensive coordinator for UMass earlier in the week, this is what they wanted to do. If they were going to start the true freshman in Jake Bentley, they were going to heat him up a little bit, bring some pressure, come from different fronts, get show a three-man front, four-man front. And then bring pressure, as Cole talked about, through the A-gap between the center and two guards, and they're able to get there. Sean Kelly punts it away. James Allen asks for a fair catch. He backed up in this field position battle after that 41-yard punt. UMass back on offense after this. Let's take a look at today's good hands play, brought to you by Allstate. See here, dropping one off. Over the top, nice catch by KC Crosby. Another one in the same corner of the end zone by Brian Edwards. Jake Bentley dropping dimes today.
They use the off week to get the freshman ready. Well, Muschamp said we wouldn't be having this conversation if he wasn't a gym rat and well prepared already. Marquise Young, the tailback. Straight up the gut, and he picks up five on first down. Yeah, they're going to the weak side of the formation, tight end. And Adam Brenneman to the right side, and South Carolina overloading to that side, covering the guard. And Michael Boland, so the, the free spot or uncovered guard, so to speak, is over the left side. You've got uh, Marquise Young, who came into this game nursing an injury. He could ill afford to lose him. He did not play in the second half of the loss to Louisiana Tech last week at Gillette Stadium. Because of an injury, now they'd look at his lower left leg. That was a game in which the UMass offensive line allowed seven sacks. Yeah. I thought maybe they could get 20 carries or so out of Marquise Young. He's at about 19 for 81 yards. You see his left ankle got rolled up on in the first Carolina player there to bring him down. Tried to go back to the huddle and just get too much pain. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see him. Special player for UMass. So Bilal Alley replaces him in the backfield. He's a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. And Alley gets his first opportunity here. Able to pick up four, and that will leave third and one. You see the difference, the smoothness in which Marquise Young runs, how he hits the hole a little bit faster. Alley kind of picking his way through. Sakai so Lindsay now checking in for, for UMass here on third and short. Third down and one. Lindsey and Robinson Woodgett in the backfield. They're going to throw. Ford moves the pocket, fires complete, flag on the play. And stretching for more is Andy Isabella. If it stands, it's a first down on a gain of seven. Flag came in from the side judge pretty quick, or the line judge to that side quickly. Illegal formation on the offense. More than four in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Defeat third down. So that'll back him up. It's a little bit tougher to pick up the first down here when it's third and about six. You want to get yourself lined up right. He talked about. Mark Whipple talked about executing. If he had to execute, show some improvement. At times they have. For it. Incomplete. They wanted a flag and didn't get it. Jamarcus King had the coverage on Isabella. Now he's played some pretty good football on that corner spot. The coach is very high on the junior. Out of Mobile, Alabama, very long player, excellent ball skills, and he shows you right there. He was beaten inside, but watch the recovery speed, and you see the, the length at 6'2", 180 pounds, able to recover and make a nice play. Chris Lamont's back to return this one. Good boy. Wow. They will walk it all the way back inside the 40. Marked out at the 38-yard line. It's a 26-yard punt. South Carolina doesn't have much ground to cover here. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Belk, the home of modern Southern style. Visit Belk.com today. Here's a way to get to your car after the game, Andre. We'll skip right over the pedestrian traffic by Let's taking a chairlift it. over the South Carolina State Fair. At the end of that is a funnel cake. South Carolina offense this season coming in has been miserable, but what a shot in the arm the freshman quarterback Jake Bentley has been for them. He really has, and is taking care of the football. This field position, 
This is when you go down, you take a shot. You got man to man on this side of the field right in here. Go ahead and let him take a shot. No gain on first down, David Williams. It can become predictable where UMass is playing. Starting to play the run on first down. You got to mix it up. Throw it. Go ahead and open things up for him. At some point this season, he's going to have to throw to win games. You might as well get the reps now. That might be next week against Tennessee. Second and nine. Bentley pressured. Swings it out to Williams. And we got flag in the play. Lee Moses on a tackle. Multiple flags in the backfield. It's going to be a holding penalty, but I'll tell you what, impressed with Jake Bentley. A rough in the passer. Automatic first down. I'll tell you what, getting through progressions. Mentioned it coming back from the half. He's mm. reading down the field. That's about his third option is the check down to David Williams. And Sean Dowdy, a little bit late on Jake Bentley. It's going to cost him about 15 yards. But that's the thing I think I'm most impressed with. We know that he can throw the football. Watched him in pregame warm-ups. He's dropped a couple of nice passes in for touchdown passes to Casey Crosby and Brian Edwards, but just getting through the project through the progression and then checking the football down, he's been excellent. That's hard to teach and to get freshmen to understand. Hurst in motion. Movement. UMass looked like they jumped. Hand off to AJ Turner. We do have flags down. Shockey holiness in on the stop for UMass. A little anxious on that far side. Offside, defense number 41. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. I mean, UMass has been competitive today, <laughs> yeah. but they just can't get out of their own and, way. And it would be an even better game. Watch up, up top, you see the movement there. Again, Deshaun Downey, but uh, fumbles, the interception. Now, penalties you throw in there. A penalty on first down when they had the ball in the last possession and back to You're them. still in the ball game, but imagine how much closer it would be if you just take away half the mistakes that UMass has made. David Williams inside the 10. Four yards on first and five. And now South Carolina can do whatever you want. The, and they're gonna what they want to do now is bring in McElwain. And even the energy with which Jake Bentley runs off the field when he gets <laughs> subbed out is something refreshing. He is. Uh, it, it'll change over time. He is just so happy to be in there and, and be a part of this and getting getting his first start. He's fired everything. He's like it's a, exciting for him. It's like a rookie baseball player that runs out every ground ball. McElwain. He's a baseball player. He takes it straight up the right side. Brought down short of the goal line. This is Jake Bentley when he got subbed out from McElwain moments ago. Nice little hustle. Nice little some dap right there. Like it. You know what? And that's contagious. It rubs off on teammates. McElwain still in the game. Williams again. Touchdown again. One yard plunge for Williams. His second touchdown of the day. Multiple flags following. Just about untouched. Good job by Zach Bailey and Mason Zandy, the left guard and left tackle. Williams walk just walks in the end zone. Ruling on the field is a touchdown following the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number five of the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 77 of the offense. Those fouls offset. That is the first unsportsmanlike penalty for each player. That's Malik Young for South Carolina and Peter Angay for UMass. If they draw another flag of that same variety, they'd be ejected from the game. Short field helped after the bad punt. South Carolina only had to cover 38 yards, and Elliott Fry on for the extra point. Second longest streak in SEC history when it comes to his kicking. Twenty-point lead for South Carolina. They did get off an extra point earlier, and that might make a difference for some before the day is done. See McElwain make the nice read here. Putting South Carolina up 34 14.
Gamecocks by 20, 7.53 to go, third quarter. Great crowd on hand on this fall afternoon. You're watching SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Third SEC opponent of the season for UMass. A lot of time left. A lot of time to get back in this game if you're UMass. You've got to get out of your own way a little bit. They've been streaky. They had a great fourth quarter against Mississippi State at Gillette last month, and the kickoff return takes it out to the 24-yard line. Recent history of the South Carolina program is a bit like a roller coaster. Head ball coach was here, and they had three consecutive 11-win seasons. Won a SEC East in 2010. Bowl wins against three teams. Programs that are top 10 now, Michigan, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. And 2014 to present, well, Three different head coaches, 12 wins, only five in conference play. Steve Spurrier's drinking diet, Dr. Pepper, somewhere right about now, or has his feet in the sand on the Florida beach, and boy, things change in a big way. Program produced the number one overall pick in Jadevi and Clowney, now a Houston Texan, and playing some outstanding football. Finally healthy, and starting to see what, uh, he, it, it, what he can really do. They had some great talent, and a lot of it was local talent as Ford completes that one to Andy Isabella. You mentioned Jadavion Clowney, Alshon Jeffrey, Marcus Lattimore, Stephon Gilmore. Yep. All guys from within the Palmetto State. And, and, and you'll hear Cooper, it all the time. I'll throw him in there oh as well. Oh, my goodness. He was a fantastic player for him up until last year. Now on to the NFL. Marquise Young back in the game for UMass. That's a good sign on a first and 10 here. But they started five different quarterbacks over the last two years. Knocked away by Rashad Fenton. Last year's starting quarterback, main starting quarterback, excuse me, it's Lorenzo Nunez. He got moved to a wide out this season. We haven't seen him play. Pretty much since Connor Shaw left this program, it's been a struggle at that position. But right now with Jake Bentley, you're going to settle in nicely there. And you've got some playmakers, a young group of players around him you can build on. I mentioned earlier, four out of five linemen will be back next year. It's got to be encouraging for Will Muschamp. Ford over the middle to Adam Brenneman. Gain of eight. This is kind of what you expected from, from UMass coming in. You eliminate mistakes. They can move the football against anybody. They pose a problem. The two tight end sets, all the shifts and motions. Got to hold on to the football. Fumbled by Adam Brenneman. Got this thing started. And led to a touchdown by South Carolina. And penalties have been a big part of it as well. Third and one. Ford through the air. Picks up the first down to Bernard Davis. Fifth year senior from Lake Worth, Florida. It's a gain of nine. Redshirt sophomore Andrew Ford showing a lot of poise. He gets the time. He can sit in the pocket and just kind of pick you apart. We, miss, we, we mentioned it earlier. Ross Comas out of the game more of the mobile type quarterback. But Ford just really executes Mark Whipple's offense. He's more of a prototypical Whipple quarterback yeah. that they've had in years past. Like Fro Napple, I know, is probably watching today. He's a big fan of yours, Andre. He threw 39 touchdowns, 6,300 yards. He's had, you know, Blake Roethlisberger you talked about when he was the quarterback coach, rookie year Pittsburgh. Big guys who can really sling the ball downfield. Big Ben can push it down the field, and he's, uh, he's coached up some good ones. <laughs> well, Ben Roethlisberger, Blake, whatever, same guys. Andy Isabella. With the I knew catch. what you were talking about. You knew. Gain of 10. Here's, here's that, you know, the tempo, their version of tempo, speeding things up, moving guys, changing formations, and they can move the ball out of this. So what Mark Whipple wants to do within his offense, and they've emptied it here, five wide. Ford steps out of trouble, lobs it, flag on the play, pass interference will get him a first down, Stephen Montak trying to stay with Jalen Williams. Yeah, Williams does a nice job of engaging the contact on Montac and then tries to fade away. He did a nice job of drawing the flag there to make it look like pass interference. A crafty senior in Jalen Williams. 
There are two, two fouls on the play. Holding on the offense, number 68. Pass interference, number 22 of the defense. Those fouls offset. Replete first out. That's a tough break. Elijah Wilkinson, who was injured last week and didn't play against Louisiana Tech at left tackle. Watch Thomas here. The There's the pass interference on the back end by Montag. Toss to Marquise Young. It really is nice to see him back in the game. Looked like a left ankle injury earlier this half. Brings a different elements of toughness and certainly speed. Get the edges, even running between the tackles. There's no hesitation. Just kind of get there. This is where they go to Brenneman or Isabella in this situation. Looking at the crossing route, pass got tipped and it's incomplete. Jalen Williams on the drag and it was knocked away by Yurik Jones. Like the composure of Andrew Ford. Stands in the pocket, nothing really seems to rattle him. He's got a nice delivery of the football. He'll throw a lot of fastballs. It's just a catchable football, which receivers can appreciate. Been good on third down today. Over the middle, complete for a first down again. Adam Brenneman. Having a great season for a guy who thought his college playing career was down after multiple knee injuries at Penn State. You see him start outside. This is the same play they threw the touchdown pass in the red zone earlier. They start Travis Reynolds up the field. It pulls the safety, opens up the middle. They bring Brenneman back inside, and it was timed perfectly, just like the touchdown pass earlier. Ford looks right, left over the middle. Now he's got to scramble. Steps away from pressure. Fires. Complete and that is just short of the first down marker to Travis Reynolds, but it's going to have UMass knocking on the door facing second and short. Watch the composure slides and then right there. Don't know that he was in bounds. Nope. This one may get called down from upstairs to review this. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. They, do. they caught it on the field. Had a little discussion. The officials down on the field and Able to come away and determine that it was incomplete. Excellent, excellent call. Poor Rocky Good, our replay official, is standing up here saying, hey, you guys going to come to me or not? <laughs> Still collecting a paycheck for this he, one. He would eventually buzz down on this one. As you can see clearly, foot's, right foot is on the line. Eleventh play of the drive coming for UMass. On second and ten, blitz up the middle. Lob to the end zone. Just too much for Isabella. Flag and Mark Whipple. Back in this game, actually talking it over with Andrew Ford, and not as going to. What they're going to do here? This is third and ten. I tell you what, maybe come back, same formation, the corner route to Brenneman, the six-five player working against the linebacker, and they indeed go back to the same formation, close to it. This Brenneman up top. Unbalanced to the left. And timeout taken by UMass. Before the snap, timeout, UMass. The first time out of the half. Coming out of the timeout, UMass will be set up for a third and ten, trailing by 20. South Carolina leads UMass. Cole, what are you seeing in the trenches down there? Ulrich Jones in the South Carolina defensive line doing an excellent job getting a push in the middle of that UMass offensive line. Pressure coming up the gut. 
That can be problematic at the quarterback position. They gave up seven sacks last week to UMass, and so far today, South Carolina only with one sack. They yeah. haven't really gotten to him. And if you're a guy like Andrew Ford, you rather the pressure come from the outside so you can step up into the pocket when it's right in your lap. That's tough because he's not known. He's, he's not known as a, a mobile quarterback. Extra tackle on the left side again for UMass. Isabella took the direct snap that time. That's a new look, and Marquise Young has nowhere to go. They come out on third and ten with Isabella. Wide receiver, but a former running back lined up in the Wildcat, and they just had nowhere to go. Yeah, just kind of a scratch your head. Call timeout, and you come back with that when you've had all your success in this drive by spreading things out. You tighten it down. That's the advantage to a bigger, stronger, and faster defensive unit like South Carolina. Kicking has been an adventure for UMass this season. Logan Lawrence. On to attempt this one. He was set back by strep throat last week. This will be a 32 yard attempt. Snap from Holder good. The kick is not. Looked like he was taking his time a little bit too much trying to hit the kick perfectly. He just pulled it. UMass just one for six in field goal attempts this season. Just flat out pulled it left. I mean, he took his time. I thought well, surely he would get it up a little bit faster because of the, the push South Carolina was getting, but he tried to be a little bit too perfect with it. He could barely kick this week. Still ill. Mark Whipple told us he kicked Wednesday's practice early in practice and just went home. So a missed opportunity. Isabella had that wildcat run, and he's getting coached up by Whipple on the sideline. Meanwhile, on the other side, quarterback position for South Carolina has been a real boost to their energy today and to the offensive production overall. Here's Debo Samuel on the jet sweep. All the way up the sideline, and he dances his way out of bounds in a gain of 23. Debo Samuel... Third-year sophomore from Inman, South Carolina, has been beset by hamstring injuries over his young football playing career, but he's helping out. Yeah, the speed to get to the edges is something that they talked about. They being uh, Kurt Roper wanted to get Samuel involved along with Dowdle. Get him out on the edges, take advantage of the speed advantage South Carolina had on offense. Here's Samuel again on the screen and he'll get a few here. They monitor his reps in practice with a GPS unit and Debo Samuel's practices essentially end whenever he crosses a 3,000 yard plateau per practice. Well, Muschamp was talking to us about it. He said, you know, our history shows and our medical research shows that most of these hamstring injuries occur and problems arise because of fatigue. So we have to manage his practice load. Now game day, Katie barred the door. He can be out there all day. Yeah. David Williams taken down at the line of scrimmage. Gain of one. Jockey Holiness with the stop. Glad our bosses don't put GPS units on us. I've seen my trips to the buffet last night. You see mine, the California Dreaming, twice in two days. Can't shake the place when I come to Columbia. I don't know if anything makes you happy. Oh, it puts a smile on my face. Straight from the airport. <laughs> Third and six for Jake Bentley. Pressure. We got a hand on him. Bentley felt that pressure and he took off. Found one, Deshaun Downey, junior from White Plains, New York, in on the stop. And that's going to happen. You know, you're going to get sacked as a quarterback. You don't play the position, and it doesn't happen. But you're not forcing it, trying to make a play. And that just shows you the football intelligence of a young player. Not trying to force the ball into coverage to try to force a play that's just not there. Take a sack in the drive with a kick. Sean Kelly gets it away from the 11. Nothing doing. 
for James Allen. 44 yard punt. It's a loss of two. Big one coming up this afternoon. Texas A&M and number one Alabama. Nick Saban 22 and six in top 10 matchups as a head coach. Couple late ones tonight, six o'clock Eastern on ESPN, Arkansas and Auburn, Ole Miss, LSU, real late yeah. tonight in Death Valley. Well, some really good games. Okay, I'll, I'll go A and M. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Alabama. Lost it for a second. Alabama, Arkansas, and Ole Miss, two road teams, and that uh, that trio of games there. Alabama. I think Alabama big though. They've had at least one non-offensive touchdown in nine consecutive games. That defense. Going to be tough for A&M's offensive line to, to handle. Our friends Vern and Gary have the call. Vern Lundquist was the guest picker on game day this morning from Tuscaloosa. Ford hands off. And Marquise Young stops. So if you, if you think Alabama big in that one, you see anybody in the SEC beating Alabama this no, year? No, not this year. Not as they – it's kind of gone along like Nick Saban wanted it to. Jalen Hurts – has gotten a little bit better each and every week, and Lane Kiffin's been able to put more and more on his plate. The defense came out playing well, and they've been able to rely on that part of the uh, the team to kind of carry him as a young quarterback has continued to grow. So no, I, I don't I don't see anybody, especially when they get to the SEC championship game. That that, that could be really ugly. Tennessee would have to be healthy. And they're not right now. No. Third the quarter back half of the schedule end. might allow Butch's crew to get healthy. We head to the fourth quarter. The Jake Bentley era is here. It's gotten off to a great start. We'll see if they can continue. Fourth quarter between UMass and South Carolina coming up next. Andre's where to watch. How is it tallied up? Yeah, limiting the mistakes. Well, UMass hadn't done that. Three turnovers and 13 points off turnovers. South Carolina, they needed production from the quarterback spot. 15 to 24, 175, two touchdowns, and he's taking care of the football. The defensive line, they needed to dominate. No sacks, but they have shut, it, shut down the running game. Only 32 yards since the first quarter when UMass had 70. Really have uh, kind of contained the, the running game to this point. UMass comes out to a third and six to start the fourth quarter. Ford incomplete, looking for Isabella. Coverage from Chris Lamars. So punting situation now in South Carolina starting the fourth quarter will have a chance to put some separation between themselves and the Minutemen. Made the Minutemen one dimension. Can't run the football with success on the early downs. Forcing you into third and medium, third and long, and then getting off the field. South Carolina, a nice job on defense here in the second half. Here's Lamonts. Lost the fumble, and South Carolina may have recovered it. It is still been loose. A disaster in special teams play when it comes to punt returns for South Carolina this season. They've rotated a handful of guys back there. And what a big break this would be for UMass. I talked to Will Muschamp. He talked about the wind. He said, it's a perfect day, not a cloud in the sky. And he said, yeah, the wind needs to calm down. With our punt returns, we've struggled in that area. And it's it looks like UMass is going to come up with it. Yep. And Will Muschamp is going to go through punt returners like he goes through quarterbacks. Just, and this is away from the sun. This job by UMass to get down. Best field position they've had in the second half. There was concern with the sun pregame. Chris Lamont talking with one of the officials looking towards the south end zone and looking mm -hmm. into the sun. This was 45 minutes before and he was trying to check with the official how can I shield my eyes without calling for a fair catch so doing his research there but son had his back here and he just couldn't handle it it's tough it's frustrating for a head coach but Will Muschamp spoke to it down on the field Marquise Young gets dropped by DJ Smith after a gain of three so a huge flip 
of the field and momentum for UMass here. Looking for just its second win of the season. Yeah, this is four down territory going in. Field goals won't do it. They're not going to get you close. We've had a miss already, and now it's every down counts going forward. You need to get find a way to get big points and get yourself in the end zone. Well, what I refer to are the big points, which are touchdowns. Ford scanning drop lobs and that one's given right back to South Carolina Chris Lamonds that'll bail him out TJ Holloman put Ford on his back and co caused that one to float like a balloon it's kind of poetic justice there you drop a fumble a fumble a punt return and you're the guy that comes up with the interception to get the football back for your team See the pressure. Watch T.J. Holloman come free right there, not allowing Andrew Ford to step into this pass, and it just hung in the air forever. For Chris Lamont. And remember what Holloman told us yesterday? He said, "You know, we really didn't blitz much last year. Yeah. Pretty vanilla defense over the last couple of seasons. It's a lot more fun playing in this one." Rico Dowdle. Gain of five. There was no doubt. Talking to Holloman yesterday that uh, they were going to bring some pressure. Only three interceptions. And that's still a uh, for T Rob, the defensive coordinator. Three interceptions, only 17 return yards. Well, that one wasn't a big return by Lamont's, but they're, just, they're certainly glad to have the football back. Dowdle again, Womb again, and he bounces this to the outside. The freshman running back picks up 16 yards and a first down. Kari Bailey-Smith finally brings him down. I'm telling you, this team, you, you can get some production in the passing game, and now this, it will open up this, because you're not, you're not sitting there with eight-man fronts all game long and trying to run the football. So you'll get some production from the running backs, David Williams, Dowdle, A.J. Turner, and now you got a guy that can push the ball down the field and Jake Bentley. On the ground, running to that trips side of the formation. Bailey Smith, the tackle gain of one. Cole? Tom, really like what I'm seeing from left guard Zach Bailey for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Previous two plays, he pulls out to the right, gets a nice kick out block on both occasions with Springs, two big runs, blocks back on that previous play. Talk to anybody on this offensive staff, they'll tell you he is their biggest asset up front along the offensive line. He's a good good young player, just a sophomore. He's their best run blocker and played some center last year. Got some versatility to his game. Play for John McKissick at Somerville High School here in South Carolina, legendary coach there. Look right, come back left, Debo caught up two. And lost the football. Right back to UMass, scooped up by Isaiah Rogers. And Rogers has room down to the 30. And the game of ping pong continues after the muff punt, a pick, and now a fumble. And UMass back into good shape. Little John at the end of this one. John and Allen Knott, the redshirt junior center, who took a shot on Rodgers at the end of this. He's still up and that ball's coming loose. That's a fumble. The previous ruling of a fumble is under further review. That play is going to stay as the Isaiah Rodgers forced fumble. That right knee still above the turf as you saw, partner. Good call before Rodgers started to jar that ball loose. Yeah, Rodgers caused the fumble. Had the presence in mind to get up, go recover it. It's going to be UMass's football on about Right at the 30-yard line of South Carolina. Rocky Good is our replay official. Matt Austin has the headset on. Now, here is when you spread them out and you throw the football around a little bit. And if you're gonna if you're gonna run it, you run it with everybody spread out with Marquise Young to get the element of speed. While you have After the defense review, spread holding out, holding on the field stands. Good call by the officials. The replay booth. It's always good when they agree with you, right? Yes. <laughs> We've had three turnovers in the last seven plays. 
right shot time if I'm calling plays. Push the ball down the field. You got a defense that's back on the field after a turnover. They're ticked off that they're back out there. Go at them. Attack. Ford has thrown a couple of picks today to go with two touchdown passes. Isabella in motion. On play action. They pick up the edge. Ford lets it go down the sideline. It is incomplete. It was in the hands of Jalen Williams, but juggled. Took the shot. Getting Andrew Ford out of the out of harm's way. Going to roll him to his left. And this is thrown perfectly. Mm. You cannot drop it or walk it down there and put it in the arms of Jalen Williams any better than this ball was thrown. Perfect throw by Andrew Ford. Growing pains continue for this young UMass team. 16 freshmen have seen action this season, only six all of last season. Ford hands it off to Young. And a change direction behind the line of scrimmage. Still managed to grind out six. Darius English the stop. I really like him as a football player. Six foot, 196 pounds. He has speed. He's young. He's a true sophomore. Going to add some weight this offseason. Be a good one for, for the next couple of years for Mark Whipple. He's got 93 yards already today to Brenneman, the tight end. DJ Smith the tackle gain of six be enough for the first down to move the chains keep an eye out for that two tight end formation where they had some success with Travis Reynolds and Adam Brenneman they lined him up at the same side and were able to find Brenneman in the end zone unbalanced line here they roll forward left behind that strong side and that one is incomplete What is the benefit of going with an unbalanced line? It's which UMass has it's, done a lot. It's protection. You see Brenneman here. He's next to the guard. So you got all linemen to his left. They take the right tackle and Driscoll and move him over. And it's for protection purposes. They're going to roll the quarterback to that side. It allows him to get all the way outside the pocket without having any pressure in his face. Well, then how predictable do they become when they do? Well, that? that's that's the, the thing about it is they do become predictable. Tight end right here, pitch left. Young's got Isabella blocking for him, able to clear some space. And he's able to pick up eight. That'll leave third and two. Chaz Elder, DJ Smith with the stop. I just can't tell you how impressed I am with Marquise Young. He's over 100 yards now, partner, 25 for 102. And look at the average, 4.1 yards against an SEC defense. I'll tell you what, he's got speed. He's got some toughness to him. Catches the ball well. Complete back. Big down here, third and one. Young takes a direct snap. And got the first down. He was able to carry Kelsey Griffin with him. And UMass will be looking at a first and goal from inside the 10. They'll mark it at the eight-yard line. I'm wondering if he can throw a pass from back there because everybody selling out on the run when he goes into the gun. If he just starts up the field, takes a step back, and lobs one, somebody's going to be wide open. Empty backfield for Ford. The line holds. Ford run. He can run with it. He'll go up the sideline and got the pylon. Touchdown, UMass. Slow developing, but it's an eight-yard run for Andrew Ford, his first rushing touchdown of the season. Boy, it just opened up to his left. Where nobody's open, he starts to slide, and then... They're in man coverage, so you got all these defenders in coverage with the receivers, and he's able to just walk it into the end zone. Backs are turned. They start to square up and look back as it was taking a little bit too long for the play to, to develop. But by then, it was too late. Andrew Libby, the holder. Still enough time, Tom. Michael Caggiano to attempt. That was a seven play, 30 yard drive. The fumble set it up. Not a good snap, but a great recovery by Andrew Libby. 
the score is Carolina. Andrew Ford, not known for his legs, able to extend this play and take it to the pylon from eight yards out. Interesting development here in South Carolina. Well, South Carolina has upgraded a quarterback. They're now driving a Bentley, and this kid comes with a ton of energy. Brings some offense and enthusiasm to this South Carolina program, which was averaging just 14 points a game coming into this one. And he's got that look. He's got the swagger and moxie of a big-time quarterback. It took the red shirt off of him, and it's paid off in a big way. Two touchdowns through the air to match the season total for South Carolina's offense coming in. And we have an interesting game here in the fourth quarter, but the uh, kickoff goes out of bounds. Mass once again with a shot to their foot. And for the takeaway in the score, South Carolina will be benefiting from field position. Still doesn't allow Jake Bentley to relax. Free kick out of bounds. On the kicking team, number 31. Ball will be placed in the 35. First down. Not yet, at least at this point in the game. We thought there was something familiar about Bentley's touchdown celebration and pose. <laughs> you seeing it? He's, he studies a lot of film, studies a lot of players, and the number four. I like it. Kind of has that gunslinger attitude. That's what I noticed when I was here for one of those fall scrimmages. He was, of the three quarterbacks, the one that continuously went deep. And offensive coordinator Kurt Roper said, yeah, yeah, that's something he'll do, and we don't want to break him of it. He said, I got to find a way to control it because you get a corner on the offside, he might come over and make you pay for it, but I don't ever want to break him of that aggressive attitude. Well, I think he studies the game, and he's smart enough to where he knows when to pick and choose to go deep. And you've seen it in this game and getting through progressions, the pre-snap reads, knowing where to go with the football. He's done a nice job of that. Williams hit immediately in a big stop by Peter Angay and Deshaun Downey. Downey starting to come to life. One of their better pass rushers off the edge and playmakers in this defense with Shane Uber out. They really need they really need him to have the type of game that he's capable of having. Just a junior out of White Plains, New York. Here's Brandon McElwain. Two sport standout. Perfect game All-American on the diamond playing for Chad Holbrook's South Carolina baseball team when he's not playing football. Got into eight games last year. No game there for the freshman from Newtown, Pennsylvania. Made three starts this season, but didn't get a snap against Georgia last time out. We have not seen Perry Orth once this season. 11 starts over the last, oh, pardon me, once this game. 11 starts over the last two seasons for the fifth year senior quarterback for South Carolina. What? Forcing a punt? UMass gets in the end zone here. It's game on. Fair catch. Requested by Allen, and he hauls it in in a crowd. 13-point game, 8.08 to go in the fourth from Columbia. The Network Football is presented by Allstate. Proud supporters of college football, it's good to be in good hands. And in part by Cooper Tire. Visit coopertire.com or a Cooper Tire dealer today. South Carolina State Fair continues just north of williams Bryce Stadium. That's a live shot, and so is this. This, my friends, is a glazed donut bacon mac and cheeseburger, Andre. <laughs> it's got a little bit of everything on here. A little your... bacon, a little tomatoes, some Ignore mac and the... cheese. It's even got lettuce, oh, so we've got goodness. some vegetables, we, we tomato gotta, and onion. we got to cut that baby up and let's, will you, let's will do you try some work it? on it. Yeah, I'm going to try it. All right. You kidding? Get us through the fourth quarter and what's become a very interesting game. Thanks to our friends from the South Carolina State Fair for providing that, and UMass for making this interesting here in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter as Marquise Young takes it for 12. All of a sudden, they found a way. As South Carolina, at one point, had only allowed 32 yards since the second quarter, and it was well into the third quarter. Now Marquise Young starting to find some creases in this run game again. Midway through the fourth, Andrew Ford lets it go incomplete between his two receivers, Isabella and Reynolds. 
and there was a mix-up. He was expecting Isabella to stay out a little bit wider. And here's when you go back to Brenneman. Adam Brenneman, who's been money so far. He's to the left side of the formation, up top in the slot. Isabella, gain of five. Is well on the reception. Trying to take the hitch route, get something on third down, so that you bring, you get at least to, excuse me, on second down, where you get it to third and medium, and you get yourself back on schedule. Where's Brenneman? Where's Isabella? Those are the money men on third down for Andrew Ford. And good for a first down on the catch by Brenneman. You called it. That's his seventh catch of the day to lead all receivers. Well, you know it's coming. You still got to stop it. And he does a nice job with body position on the defender. Nice out route. And he flattens it. That's what gets him open against D.J. Smith. The board looking for a pump and go. Coverage was there. Now he's flush. Lobs it deep down, wide open, and he overshot Brenneman. There wasn't anyone within 15 yards. Somehow Brenneman got behind the coverage and a missed opportunity. He was a threat to run. That drew the coverage. Watch him as he gets out of the pocket. Everybody's going to come up. Brenneman sitting there wide open. Look at this. Throw me the ball, please. You could punt it and complete it. I got to feel if he catches that one, he's going to turn, get in the end zone. That's one as a quarterback that you wish you had back. Sometimes they're the, the hardest throws are when the guys are wide open like that. And that one's incomplete, trying to find Marquise Young. We talked with this UMass coaching staff about all the injuries they've been through this season. And there's some belief that that can be cumulative based on the schedule that they play, going against their, now their third SEC team, Boston College, another big one that they had to play a big front. And you wonder if maybe some of the hits Ford's taken today is leading to his lack of execution. Not, not, not that one to Brenneman. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no way. I know. I, I feel where you're going. <laughs> you want to give him an exception here, but no way. Well, that he, one should have been a completion for a touchdown. He also missed an easy one, or seemingly easy one, to Young right there over his head third and ten after two consecutive incompletions and so they'll turn to young and they got him by his shirt tail which is going to keep him from picking up a first down and leave fourth and two and a half well when they spread out south carolina that's when they've had success in the running game it's when they've tightened the formation down you see here fullback he's going to get right in behind the fullback and just kind of pick his way People to turn him around. That kind of stymied the momentum. But here on fourth down, this is when they like to roll Andrew Ford away from the pressure and throw something quick in the flats. Three-man rush. They go right there. It's caught for the first down. Who is it again? It's Mr. Brenneman. Lost his helmet. That's the only way you can keep him from being productive. We'll have to come off for a play. Eighth catch of the day for Brenneman. He's doing a number on these safeties of South Carolina. DJ Smith, Chaz Elder. Nice quick out. Ball's on time. In between two defenders, and he's still able to. You got three guys there closing on Brenneman. DJ Smith went down holding his right knee. We'll step away for a timeout with 5.55 to go. UMass driving on South Carolina. That's an injury tent that will protect the player from the view of the opponent when they're being given medical treatment. And inside that tent for South Carolina is D.J. Smith. And along with him, a team-high 12 tackles. He rolled his ankle on that last play before being taken out of the game. It's a big loss for South Carolina. Meanwhile, UMass continues this drive. This is the ninth play of the drive. As they like look to get within a touchdown of South Carolina in their first ever win against an SEC opponent. On play action, Ford eludes pressure. On the run, incomplete. Big hit 
on Bernard Davis by Jamarcus King separated Davis from the football. Yeah, prevented a big play in the passing game. Ford does a nice job working the pocket and then escaping. And it was a well thrown football that you just kind of have to catch. You know, you're going to take a shot. You got to come up with with that catch. Bernard Davis, a senior, should make that play. Two years at Coffeyville Community College in Kansas for King. They're still refining his technique. He's put a lot of work in, but he's got great ball skills. Play clock at five. They'll roll forward left again. The southpaw will throw, and that is incomplete. Missed opportunities. Again. Bernard Davis couldn't haul it in. Second time in Lake Worth, Florida, the fifth-year senior. He's open, ball's there, low, and in front. You got to make that catch. That's two. He allowed King to break up the last one. That one, really no excuse. He should have caught it. UMass first year as an independent after calling the Mac home for a handful of years. 5.37 to go, looking for a signature victory on the road. They need points and in a hurry. And it is almost intercepted by King, able to break on that long pass. Pulled one out of his quiver that was designed for Isabella. Javaris Robinson, the defensive coordinator, told me about his length. I said, what is it, what's special about Jamarcus King? Watch the break that he gets on this ball. And on a couple of occasions today, he can't get there to intercept it, but boy, those long arms... That long frame allows him to get a hand in and deflect the ball away. That's what NFL teams are looking for. 6'2", 180. He's going to add some weight. The ball skills are there. I think he's got a future on the next level. Fourth and ten. Pressure coming up the middle. Ford. Great touch for a first down to Davis. When and he needed it. Alive, an extra yardage on a flag on a late hit. Yeah, late hit out of bounds. And when he needed it, Davis finally coming up with a play on fourth down to move the chains and then an additional, some additional yardage on the late hit out of bounds. Following the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 26. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Don't relax yet, South Carolina fans. We still got a ways to the finish in UMass. Making a case to get back in this game. What a well-thrown ball out in front by Andrew Ford to Bernard Davis, who dropped two in this drive or in this series of downs, but they're coming up big on fourth down. Remember, UMass had a great fourth quarter against Mississippi State. Fine Brenneman. They almost came back to win that one at Gillette. Ford in zone. Shy the end zone and incomplete. They did find him. Matter of fact, four jerseys of a different color surrounding Adam Brennan in that time. And he probably should have gone to Travis Reynolds, who was in the end zone. They separate Reynolds, you see, going left. Brenneman comes inside, and that's triple coverage. And Reynolds in the corner, basically by himself. Can't make up your mind. You still have to read coverage when you get down inside the red zone. A lot of quarterbacks go with the security blanket, and that's certainly Adam Brenneman for Andrew Ford. 14th play of the drive. Pressure. Ford gets dropped. Bryson Allen Williams with his first second skip of the season. It's a loss of seven. Not sure if the receivers were all on the same page in terms of coverage, but it took a while for everybody to get down the field. A little bit too long. Here comes pressure. Every receiver's route has to speed up. You got to recognize it, cut those routes off, and get open. Timeout, South Carolina. The first time out of the half. UMass wanted to hurry it up on third and 17. South Carolina will use the timeout here to set the defense for 38 remaining here in williams Bryce Stadium. You see here, you're going to get the blitz from this area of the field. Now, they're, what they're trying to do is run a pick. Where they do this, you, you pick out here and run a receiver underneath. But you have once you know the blitz is coming, everything has to speed up. You're running the full route. Everything's got to shorten itself up to give Andrew Ford a chance 
to get the football out. Third down, 17. They need to get it inside the two. Four down territory, certainly here for, for UMass. Caught. Touchdown, Adam Brenneman. 18-yard strike, second touchdown catch of the day as a former high school teammate's hook up again. And a former Penn State player, the transfer. You go with a guy that uh, you're comfortable with, you know that can make plays for you. Ford to Brenneman. And they are back in this football game. After all the turnovers, UMass still alive. They're able to cash in on a 15-play drive. Michael Caggiano with the extra point. He gets good. Our score. Boy, just throws a frozen rope to Brenneman up the seam. And this is looking off the safety and letting one go. You know you're going to take a shot. D.J. Smith is there, but he's just too big, too strong, and the hands solid by Adam Brenneman. Watch this throw. Got a little velocity on that one. And he protects Brenneman with the throw. He's spin him around. The two high school teammates to play and throw and catch here. You think Brenneman's happy he continued his collegiate career? He left Penn State thinking he was done after multiple knee injuries. And these two kids who played together at Cedar Cliff High School in Pennsylvania, where Andrew Ford was an elite 11 quarterback. He went on to Virginia Tech, signed with them before junior college for a couple seasons in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and then on to UMass. And Brenneman was done. He was home basically shutting it down. He was hired as a campaign manager for Mike Regan, a state Senate candidate in Pennsylvania. They won the Republican primary in the 31st district, but he discovered politics, as we all know by now, is a brutal industry. He came back to football, a little bit less violence in football. No doubt about it. And these two have another year to connect with one another. They've got at least another year together with Ford being a sophomore and Brenneman just a junior. It looks bright for Mark Whipple's offense. Six point game here. Ball back to South Carolina. And the kick is fumbled out of the end zone and scooped back up. Special teams disasters continue. A.J. Turner will cost him 10 yards of field position. Actually 15 after that ball was kicked out of the end zone. And the reason we're here right now, and it's a six point game instead of a seven point game, special teams this was a key play in the first half a muffed hold on a good snap south carolina couldn't get the kickoff sean kelly the holder couldn't get his hands on it and elliot fry hasn't missed an extra point in his entire career you see here the fumble on the by aj turner on the kickoff return if you just stay in the end zone you get the ball at the 20 now it's advantage umass who can really play downhill and attack a true freshman quarterback in Jake Bentley. So Bentley trying to will them to a win here in the fourth quarter. Directing traffic. He gets Samuel to throw a block for him. And he slides down after a gain of seven. A nice job there. Not panicking. And as he's approaching the line of scrimmage, he's directing traffic. Just out there having fun. Cole, what do you see? Talked to Brian Blackman, Opelika High School head coach, this morning, actually, Tom, and he said, Jake Bentley won me over in moments that he was under pressure at Opelika High School. Played their rival, Auburn High School, last year. Game-winning drive with under two minutes left. Said, that's the moment I knew this kid can lead. He's going to be a big-time player. But it's a big step up from Alabama High School football and a big step to Debo Samuels. Got the first down. Past the 40-yard line, a gain of 24. Or right on the money. Up the seam goes Samuel. And uh, Jake Bentley throws a dime of his own. Watch here off the play fake. Looking outside, comes back inside to Samuel. Here, what, that's, that's nice work. True freshman in a pressure situation. And Jake Bentley starting to deliver for, for South Carolina. Eighth catch for 105 for Samuel. Bentley deep down the sideline. Too much. Brian Blackman, his high school coach, made the drive over from Alabama to be at this game today. We've got a flag on the play down inside the 30. 
That's going to give South Carolina some yardage. That's what we were talking about earlier. He's not afraid to take deep shots. We're in a big part of the ball game. Pass interference. Defense number 27. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And, they, and with the receivers of South Carolina, the Bri Brian Edwards, Debo, Samuel have to realize is this guy can get you the football. You don't stop running. Perry Orth, Brandon McIlwain, they can't make that throw. But certainly, Jake Bentley can. Well, isn't it also a frame of mind, that aggressive mindset to make the throw, even to attempt it, whether or not you have the arm strength, that's where he's looking. Yeah, and they're, they're not you know, used to it. This is the first game with this type of arm strength on the field with this receiving group. So it takes a little bit of adjusting to trust that I can continue running and the ball's going to get there. So first down for the Gamecocks after the P.I. And we've got another flag down as Rico Dowdle tries to find some room. It's usually an illegal formation when it comes in from the side. And that quickly. Illegal formation on the offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Just count them there. You see them all in the backfield right here. Too many. The officials are going to call it every time. You needed one more on the line of scrimmage. Probably that wide receiver that was at the top of the formation. So first and 15. 3.05 to go. UMass has two timeouts remaining. It is still a long way to the finish line. But the way Jake, excuse me, yeah, Jake Bentley's playing, you feel like you're in good hands if you're, you're Will Muschamp. He has taken care of the football today. They want him to milk the clock a little bit here. The play clock starts, and we'll get under three minutes. Take the time, look at the clock, and wait for the snap as this instruction from the sideline. Get it at least to single digits. And he'll take off up the middle, find nothing. Loss of two. Thanks. Ali Ali Musa there. I, I understand what the coaching staff is trying to do, but sometimes that just kills the rhythm of the offense. If you're this close, you're driving, you got a hot quarterback, the offense is moving the football, just go execute. You're going to run the football, run it, but you know, don't bring him out of the huddle and have them standing at the line of scrimmage and the clock's just running. You become stale offensively, and I think that's what happened on the last snap, that last play. Imagine you're not doing your offensive line any favors None. either. It's a long time to ask the big guys to stay in a stance. They'll do it again here. Play clock will get to five. Pressure coming. Bentley over the middle. Incomplete. There are multiple flags. Line judge just launched his 30 yards. Bakari Goodson had the coverage. Trying to get it to Jacob August. Yeah, Goodson had a big interception last week against Louisiana Tech, but wrapped up and then kind of wheeled his body in front around the receiver. Certainly inter interference. Pass interference, defense number 45. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Young player, true freshman that continues to improve, but when that ball got through. It went right through the hands of Jacob August, the tight end. 149 remaining. On a drive where UMass desperately needs a stop. They need a turnover at this point. 149. You've got to have the football. And if I'm South Carolina, I'm just going to run it from this point on. Four star forcing the timeouts with a first and 10. August and Hurst will shift to the right side. Rico Dowdle bottled up. 
Timeout taken by UMass to stop the clock at 141. Well, it got down to 139 now. Timeout UMass. Well, this, the if it holds, would be a win to build on for seconds. South Carolina. They would need to win Please four of their the last six. To get back to a bowl, it was a regular occurrence under Steve Thank Spurrier. You. They missed the postseason last year. Tennessee is next. And Missouri comes to town. They have to go to the swamp. Catamounts of Western Carolina come here, and they close, as always, with Clemson. Well, the thing about it for the, the opponents on that schedule is that now you got to prepare for something else, which is Jake Bentley. And it's an element of South Carolina's offense that they haven't been able to put on display because they certainly just couldn't hit areas of the field with a passing game. And now you, know, you have to respect the ability to go deep. If the defense can play well, well enough, uh, you may be able to get yourself on a roll here. Well, it was funny talking with the coaches yesterday, and specifically Will Muschamp, and he was being very coy about whether or not Bentley would start. I said, what happens if you do make a change at quarterback? He said, if we make a change and we can get the ball on the perimeter and our wide receivers stay healthy, we really feel yeah. like this could be a taking off point for the offense. Yeah, you got tight ends involved and Hurst and Crosby. Samuel is dynamic with the ball in his hands and Edwards, he's starting to make plays. On second down, gain of two. That will leave third and five, 136 remaining. Another timeout used by UMass. It'll be their last. They, timeout UMass, UMass anticipated UMass Jake Bentley would see time today. Half. Came out and got the start. And he brought a boost of energy to this team right off the bat. Yeah, started with Brian Edwards, then able to make some plays, moving around, and threw a nice pass to Casey Crosby. That was his first touchdown pass. Went right back, same area of the field to Brian Edwards. He comes down. That's the second touchdown pass. Having a little fun on a Saturday afternoon is Jake Bentley. 17 of 26, 201, and two touchdowns. Not a bad day for his first start. He's our player of the game, brought to you by Allies. It's kind of funny. Doesn't seem to be any difference to him playing on a Saturday afternoon versus a Friday night. <laughs> no, which is where he should be playing after having graduated high school as a junior. Coming on to South Carolina, but I was impressed when I got a chance to see him before the game at just the size. You know, he is a big kid at 6'3, 223, and he is every bit of those measurables. There was uh, some thought by Will Muschamp that had he been committed to Auburn or Alabama, maybe the Opelika School District <laughs> would have been more understanding of trying to find that last class to get his high school diploma. Rico down on the left side, as it were. That'll he had to it. get his high school diploma in Spartanburg, South Carolina. They'll go victory formation the rest of the way. Jake Bentley comes uh, off the bench, essentially. They take off his red shirt. And he comes out to lead South Carolina to a win in his very first start. They were only averaging 305 yards a game. Now with them, nearly 400 today. They averaged only 14 points a game before today. And, and only now. A season high of only 20. And you take the red shirt off Jake Bentley and he's able to put up 34. So this is one game. What about his performance today suggests that he can replicate this performance, maybe not exactly, but be the best choice at quarterback for South Carolina against SEC competition? I think he, because you're, you're high on him as a coaching staff because he took care of the football. Now he's shown you I can get through progressions and get to the right receivers. So now going forward, there was a very limited playbook with Jake Bentley today. They will consistently add to that playbook for him as you get into Tennessee and games down the schedule. He'll get a little bit more each week. Jake Bentley era off to a pretty good start for Will Muschamp and company. Mark Whipple's team Goes 0-3 against the SEC this year. Long flight back to Amherst. But for now, the story of the day is freshman quarterback Jake Bentley. South Carolina moves to 3-4. and four, Back to SEC play next week against Tennessee. We'll be back with more from williams Bryce Stadium in just a moment. But first, let's get back to the studio and check in with Peter Burns.